Shirts and skins, let's get it. Yo. Shirts and skins, and we back again. The best coverage in college sports, we come to win. With Brandon, Mark, and Matt, no one go hard as that. Share with your folks, and they'll learn where it all be at. It's just three of the guys, childhood friends that be setting the vibe with a few hot takes, jokes, and predictions. Love the Boise State, we now welcome you to listen. Shirts and skins, let's go. Shirts and skins listeners, what is up? This is the Shirts and Skins podcast. I am Matt Lamb, alongside Brandon Minert, and we've got a special guest today, veteran, veteran of the veteran show, veteran guest host, <laughs> yeah, Taylor Whitney, our first returning guest. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me back. Thanks for yeah. coming back, Nacho Tay, as he's well known. Apparently, there was there weren't enough people that you know wanted to cancel you, or you know there wasn't negative yeah. feedback. Well, I, People I, love you, Taylor. I said nice things about Harson, so I was worried about that. I think I gave you a little bit of grief. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah. Friendly fire. <laughs> yeah. Glad to have Friendly you back. Fire. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, guys, we are coming off the news that was announced, uh, what, a couple hours ago? Yeah. Selection Sunday. Yep. Uh, it's March. Awesome time of the year. March Madness coming up. We were anticipating... You know, a lot of uh, reports out there saying we were going to be like a seven seed. Yep. I think that's kind of where my expectation was. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't the case. No. What do we get, Brandon? Um, can I have? I have a reaction. Yeah. But I have. I need to go get something. Okay. So uh, while while Brandon please. goes and gets that, we weren't prepared for this. No, he didn't I let didn't, us know. No, I didn't know this. So we're in on the shock uh-huh. as much as uh, the viewers out there on YouTube. By the way, if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to us. We are, I think, just under 300, <laughs> 300 subscribers. We're trying to get to 300. We want to get to 500. Okay. Brandon has a tinfoil hat. I'm back. Aluminum foil. I'm ready to give my reaction. Conspiracy theory. Prep yourselves. Illuminati, baby. Illuminati. It's all, I'm all in on it's rigged. It's all rigged to me. Okay. I know nothing. I know, I know that. Tell every, us why you think it's rigged. I feel like everything's rigged, number one. Uh, but number two, I have never had a good selection Sunday with Boise State. I've never like, been really excited. No, I've, no. I've loved, I've always been excited. I've always been happy about it. And I feel like, and somebody posted this on Twitter, um, Charlie Brown kicking the field goal and then them pulling it out right before, what was her name? <laughs> Uh, well, who's the girl was, that, was that Lucy? Yeah, that Lucy, Lucy, Lucy pulling the football out before he kicks it, and that's yeah. BSU every time. And and the worst one, the, I feel like this one's really bad. Two years ago, when we won the Mountain West tournament, we won the Mountain West conference, and some people were saying that we were going to be a six seed. Kind of look like the Pope, like a Pope. Hat. I didn't know how to make it. It's good. It's good. <laughs> I don't know. I've never made one before. Never, you've done this before. I've, I've never made one before. before. But look, here's the deal. <laughs> yeah, the Illuminati are listening. They control everything. Yeah, they're the people, listening. the people on the committee. <laughs> you know they're listening. Yeah. You know they're, they're listening. The Illuminati. <laughs> they're the Illuminati, they're obviously. Everywhere. So look, I'm just trying to cover my bases. Uh, the people on the committee are. Th- that's like the stepping stone to get into the Illuminati. You have to be a prow- power broker and move and like crush dreams to get into the Illuminati and the and the, like the, um, the feeder league is the committee, the selection committee. Yeah, that's just kind of my feeling on that. So, so yeah, the the thought is, coming from the Mountain West, we're a six bid conference, correct? How we long got six do I, teams in? Yeah, have I made the point? I think so. No, okay, you I mean, keep it on. Okay, I'll put it back on when I'm talking about them. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm freaking! I'm like seriously devastated. Yeah, when did, I saw that a play in. <laughs> did you see the? So um, that our, was our brutal. Good, our good buddy BJ Rains at yeah. Bronco Nation yeah. News. Uh, he posted the reaction. Yes. Did you see that? Yeah, it was Sad. like. Ugh. Did you hear that someone in the back's like, "Damn!" Did you hear that? <laughs> 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 Somebody did. I don't know if it was a player or what, but I, I just like I can't, I can't. And then they started slow clapping, oh, like, yeah. "Oh, we should be happy about." Dude, this. that was the same reaction they had when they were playing Memphis. They was like, uh, "Hey, we were a nine seed playing an eight seed Memphis." We're like, "Hey, great. This year we're felt like dead." Though. Like I know this has been the history, but this year felt different. Like it felt like we were gonna get that higher seed this year like it felt a little bit different like even i was convinced we were it yeah. was gonna happen and when you say even i was you're saying like a non-basketball or yeah, I don't get into but as much as you guys but you're a season ticket holder 
Sure. Basketball. Yeah. yeah. And you go to a lot of the games. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing about it is BJ Reigns posted three projection brackets. And that's what gets me so hyped about it. Seven seed, seven seed, seven seed. On it all was a them. lock, basically, in our minds. All of them. And then we're like, ooh, Salt Lake City? Possibly playing Salt Lake City. Things are getting playing good. Oklahoma. <laughs> playing Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah, like in the biggest win of our lives. Yeah. And then it's 10, wah, play playing. In. Dayton. Blah, Dayton. Dayton. <laughs> like, is this the third time Dayton? Se- I think it's second time Dayton. Well, the, would- the only odd thing is we're not playing Dayton. I know. That was the one thing that they could have done <laughs> to get us. Because Dayton's but it's in just, the tournament. But it's just so stupid. I mean, you looked at the – somehow we got b- to the to the first four in, right? Somehow we became a b- like bubble Like the team. last four in, right? Well, We're I think the it was last the first four, four, four first four, and then the anyway, the last four, and then the first four out. I guess is that how they categorize? Anyway, it's like somehow if if we would have won a game in the Mountain West tournament, we would have been what a ten seed not playing. I don't. Who knows? <laughs> well, it's, it's a good thing like, we won. I don't get State. it. <laughs> like, I don't get we won it. San Diego State. They were saying like, what if we didn't win that game? Would we even? Would we even be in? <laughs> which I didn't expect that us is, to win that game. That is brutal. Which is crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's brutal. I don't know. I, I guess going into the tournament, it, it was it wasn't a great game. But I also thought, and I was just listening to everybody. It's like, hey, this is a cream on the top of the cake type of a situation for Boise State. They win, that's great. That's gravy. If they lose, hey, it's okay. The seed basically is the same either way. But is it like if they would have won the Mountain West tournament, the the tournament Boise State, what would they have been? A nine seed, an eight seed. It's, well, it's hard Maybe to tell. an 11. <laughs> Possibly I mean, an 11 with a guarantee. I mean, New Mexico's an 11, right? New Mexico's an 11. Yeah. And then, so hold on. So we got six teams in. New Mexico's an 11, but they're in. They're in. They have to play they Clemson. They don't do the play-in game. They have to play Clemson, which we played. Right. Um, and then you have what? Nevada is a play-in. Who else was a play-in? Nevada. Do you have was. it? It was Nevada. Nevada's a play-in. Or was it Colorado State? I thought it was Utah State. No, Utah or State. Colorado they're a nine. They're Colorado State. State. Yeah, yeah. Who are they play? Uh, they had a know, tough they the poll, Colorado I think. State. Colorado State's the other play-in. And I think they had a tough draw on the play-in. Virginia. <laughs> Virginia's a <laughs> Which tough is like one. a classic basketball team, right? Virginia's a tough one. They've, they've been a one seed in the past five years, like twice. Yeah, they've won championships. Uh, <laughs> so that's a tough draw. But at the same time, you have what? Nevada? What was Nevada at? Nevada is 10, pl- playing Dayton. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> um, did Nevada win a game in the Mountain West tournament? I don't know what they did. I think they did. Let me let me get let me get the Mountain West tournament. Hold on. They did. I mean, didn't we discuss this in the prep show? Yeah, we did. In our planning meeting? They didn't. Yes. Pl- yeah. I'll, let me just tell you. Let me just tell you. Yeah. Okay. Brandon. I'm just curious what if we would have won a game, what would we what would be what would have been the best case scenario, right? It wouldn't have mattered because Yeah, and I think it was we in talk- conference. Yeah, and we talked about it like and I've heard also, listening to Clark Kellogg when he was on the radio, he was talking about how much the Mountain West tournament, how much effect that would have, and it's very little. Yeah, um, but what? I mean, he, he said one, one uh, up or down, one seed. Okay. One well, seed line. Okay, well. So little effect, meaning it doesn't we make wouldn't your have seeding very much. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, Nevada won a game, and they don't have a plan, right? Yeah. So that's that would have been the best case scenario. For and we us. were second in the regular season in the Mountain West to Utah State. Uh-huh. We obviously laid an egg in the tournament. We laid an egg against the team that won it. It was really hot. But we looked bad too, I thought. Yeah. Not that it matters because yeah. I don't think anybody watched. It's not like the committee saw that game was judging off of that game either. That's true. I mean, but everybody knew New Mexico had to win. In fact, in, on Twitter, they said that the selection, the selection committee said if they hadn't won the tournament, they wouldn't have been in. So that mattered. And also, okay, on a different note, is it better that New Mexico's in? Like, let's say BSU beats New Mexico, and then we go on to the semis, and we beat or we lose that semi game. And uh, we only got five teams in the tournament. Is it better financially to have six teams in the tournament? I don't know what the financial ramifications are. I'm just wondering, because we have six teams in now versus we would have only had five teams. And we still had to play in game, probably. I don't know. Or I, anyway, I I'm like I'm super angry about it. And my only my only rational thought about it is that it's because we haven't had a good history in the tournament. Yeah, Boise State and the Mountain West. Yeah, like traditionally we all lose except for San Diego State in the first round. 
Even when Colorado State was a six seed a couple years ago, they just got destroyed. When we won the Mountain West tournament Mm -hmm. and the Mountain West Conference, Colorado State was six seed. How was that? Why why, why did that happen? I don't know. (laughs) Anyway, and so, and then Colorado State lost. It's just like, it's so stupid. Yeah, and the, also, uh, Coach Rice was interviewed after their reaction, right? After they found out. And the word that he used was head scratcher. He's like, you know, like we thought kind of like what we said, every projection showed we were going to be a seven seed. And so coming out of it, it's like, I think the same reaction that we have is like, I don't know. Like, what was it based on? I think what was it based on? It wasn't based on net. It was not based on net. Yeah. So you, you make the argument of, and we could talk about this right now or we could talk about it later, but scheduling, right? How did scheduling affect what was it worth it to play those tougher teams at the beginning of the season so non-conference? The odd thing was is we played we played uh Clemson. We played Clemson, we played Virginia Tech, we played Washington State, St. we played St. Mary's, Mary's and San Francisco. We played with San, San Francisco, they didn't make it in, right? I don't think they made it in. Oh, I thought they I did. I don't know oh. who won the well, I think only, they, were only good, they were counted as a good win, though. They were counted as a good win. And then only we played North Texas. We put but we but only two teams Gonzaga from the West Coast. Won the West Coast, right? No, uh, St. Mary's did. St. Mary's did. Yeah. yeah. And but five, so I think. Gonzaga and St. Mary's were the only two teams from the West Coast Conference. Yeah. Um but Clemson, that's a really good BYU's one. BYU's in though. Sorry, General. Yeah, yeah, West no. Coast Conference. Yeah. Yeah. Um They're big twelve. Virginia Tech, did oh, they make it in? Yeah, sorry. I don't think so. Virginia Tech didn't make it in. I don't know. I'll pull it up. I, I, I don't You're know how to schedule. I don't know how to do scheduling because it looks like – because one of the things the s- committee said I, that I saw that they said was all of your quad one wins were just conference wins. So good for you. <laughs> well, that's the one feedback I saw from Bubba, yeah. who's on the committee, Bubba Cun- Cunningham or something. Where is he at? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, what team he's at. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, he, he's the one that said that, the, the non-con – there wasn't enough non-conference wins, so all the good wins came from in-conference. So yeah, then, didn't, are, didn't, didn't Colorado State have a bunch of good non-conference wins? I saw someone debating what he said. New Ma- or Utah State won that conference preseason, you know, or whatever, right? So, so did we? Is the Mountain West just this vacuum of a conference where we don't know how good any of the wins were because we just each beat other? each other because up? We just beat each other. Just an echo chamber. Of yeah. <laughs> but the only the the one thing we have is San Diego State. <laughs> Because they went, they were the yeah, no, the runner-up last year, yeah, and that's, I mean, they were five seed, and I think largely based on that fact that they, yeah, are year after year they do very well, yeah, right, and so I think that definitely comes into consideration when they're putting these seeds on teams is like these guys do well, it's not so much. Do they? And I and I one time last year they did. Have they done good in the they, tournament? They typically win their first game. Yeah, traditionally win their first. They're game. the only Mountain West team that wins. Pretty much the, the only tournament. one that wins. They they have a number of wins and, in the tournament. And could you make the argument that it's like Boise State usually loses? So let's put them in the first four in so that it's kind oh, of a, hate that. Yeah. it's kind of a non game anyway. Can I get my um, Tim Foley hat again and say yeah. Mark Coyle screwed us over? Yeah, do it. <laughs> Because Coyle... That's a great thought, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> you brought it up. An <laughs> original thought from Taylor. From Taylor. Taylor Taylor He's made it known. Committee. He's on the committee. Dude, he had a he had a quick rise. Like, he rose up the ladder pretty quick. He went to uh, Syracuse, and then he went to Minnesota, and he's on the basketball, the NCAA basketball selection committee. Well, that's impressive. I, do you guys know much about the selection committee? I have no idea. I, I don't. I think it's the Illuminati. That's who I think it is. You just heard me say that. There's 10 people on the committee. That's small. Are they all ADs? It's random commissioners and ADs. Is Condoleezza Rice on there? <laughs> like, no. Like, <laughs> There's no notable names that I could see. We only know Mark Coyle because he was a Boise Warren, State. Nobody knows Mark there? Coyle. <laughs> but there's there's a SWAT commissioner. SWAT. Um, Southwest Athletic. Sun Belt Com- commissioner. So it's a uh, Big Skies commissioner. So it's not like SEC, ACC, Big 12. So it's just random Commissioners and then random athletic directors: Iowa State, Why? Oregon State, North Carolina, Minnesota, Alabama, Butler, Samford. Did Butler Temple, make it? And Santa Clara. Do you have the bracket up, Matt? Because we played Butler. We played beat VCU. Can you pull the bracket? Did any of those teams that like Butler or VCU? Did any of those teams make it? I don't remember seeing their names on the. So you're angry. That's your. Response. I'm just like I'm. I, you get set up. You know, you're just expecting a number, and then this number comes. I mean, you essentially, if you're if you think you're a seven seed, there's four teams in the eight, there's four teams in the nine, and there, you know, so you're like twelve no, no teams Butler, below. No VCU. 
Okay. VCU lost to Duquesne in the championship. Uh, well, we beat VCU. And they're a two seed, I think. Duquesne? Yeah. Uh, or am I thinking of somebody no, else? No, they're <laughs> not a two seed. No, I think they're a 12 Duke. seed. Duquesne made it. Yeah. They're they're high up. They're a 11, 10, 11, 12. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I Maybe I should just stop listening to all the the reports about what, what our seeding is. I mean, the whole thing is, like, all season it's... Duquesne will you, 11 against BYU. Yeah. It's it's all season. You're like, what's are we going to make it? What seed are we going to be? Sorry, I was thinking Marquette. Marquette's up there high, yeah? Yeah, Marquette's <laughs> Am I making up it there, up again? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> did you watch it or did so you see Marquette's a two versus Western So Kentucky, I'm on record yeah. as being apathetic about it. Not because I don't get as interested in basketball as I do in football, but I'm just not surprised. And so maybe it's a less emotional response. Not that I'm more um, unreactionary than you, but I don't know. Like, it all seems... To validate your point about the Illuminati, like what is the criteria? Yeah. How do we even stick to it? Do, what actually matters? Leon Rice said that in his interview too. He's like, we don't know what actually matters. Does it matter to win by 30 or 40? Or does it matter to have a tough quad schedule? Quad. Does the net matter? So if coaches, <laughs> and you know that Leon Rice and Jeremiah Dickey do a lot of their due diligence to try and strategize to get themselves in a good position. They feel like this is the year it all came together to actually do that. And then this still happens. So I'm just not surprised. But basketball is interesting to me because in football, it's clear that the, who the powers are in play, right? It's the SEC, the Big, Big Ten. the Big Ten. But in basketball, you have a bunch of perennial basketball powers that are not from those conferences. So who's in power and who's, who's manipulating this from a power perspective in basketball? I don't know. But to me, I've never known what to actually – I've never arrived at – expecting if we do this, then we'll get a good seed. Because to me, it's been unclear all along and it's inconsistent and there's no actual accountability is not the right word I'm looking for, but there's no consistency on how this actually happens anyway. Leon, other than, well, well, and what's the criteria and does previous performance from previous years actually factor in? Yes. And where is that documented? That's not <laughs> a part of the actual criteria, right? No. But that's what happened. Right. You know, right. The bias type stuff. Well, so West coast bias, previous year bias, ESPN bias. Well, CBS owns the mm, tournament, that's right? A good point. Right? I saw someone complaining point. that was it um, the Big East? Is Big East have basketball? Yeah. They only got three teams in with the Fox contract, and then the Mountain West of the CBS contract got six, six in, and they were griping about that, saying that was conspiracy. Yeah, that could be it. You know, Leon earlier in the season said it's all about quad one wins. And then if you evaluate that statement now, you have to basically step back and say, well, it's not. It's not about quad one wins because you had a bunch. You had like seven. Because right. yeah, how many of those quad one wins were against tournament teams? All of them. Against conference teams. Well, all of, well, hold on. St. Mary's right. uh, was a quad one win. And then who else was our good win? <laughs> Did we, that, was, that was non-conference. That was non-conference. I don't know that we was had. It, I don't know that we had a. No. Con- in? Well, because um, Washington State was going to be a big one. San we Fran lost. was a top 100. North Texas was a top 100 at the time. That, I think that St. Mary's was our biggest one. Mm-hmm. But I think we had, I think it was seven quad one wins, which is like triple what a lot of these other teams had, which is crazy. Here's one thing I thought was interesting. On Twitter, I guess Mark Few and Leon Rice, they all they have, did you guys see this? Mm-mm. Mark Few talking. Can I play it? Yeah. Um, I guess they have this coaches chat, like text message group. And um, a couple of the coach. this is all his like coaching circle. And two of his coaches are going to be playing each other. Um, yeah, actually, Mons and was, he's talking about he's talking about the Tommy, Don Mons that was like, and then, uh, uh, you know, he took off from Minnesota, and so I had to call him after he left. I'm like, what the hell's the deal with this guy? You said anyway, <laughs> hanging out. He talks here. about Boy State, and then obviously Tommy ended up just being just spectacular uh, for, for Gonzaga and all of us, and. and uh, Certainly down in Arizona too, but it's, yeah. So, but so yeah, it, it's a loose connection, but and connection nonetheless. Leon versus Billy in the first four yeah, game too. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I don't want to get on too much of a soapbox, but Leon, that's one of the worst screw jobs I've seen, man. I mean, they, <laughs> I mean, they had a heck of a year, and swept some of the teams that are four or five seeds ahead of them, and uh, San, yeah, San Diego State that one swept. Was shocking. So, but I was glad to see Tad. Swept, swept New Mexico regular season. Yep. Swept San Diego State regular season. Who got the five seed? So that's significant. Is it? Apparently not. No, enough. it's not. I don't. I, don't, I guess. <laughs> I mean, to well, it should to be. who? 
Right. Right. I don't to know. Us it is. To me, it is. It. It. New Mexico is a, a great team. I always mm-hmm. thought New Mexico was like the be- could have been the best team in the Mountain West if they kept playing consistent consistently, because they can score ten points in a minute. Their guards are crazy. Their guards are so yeah. good because they get a steal, they get a bucket, they get a steal, they get a bucket. They get, you know, they just kind of go so fast. And that's what they did against BSU when they, you know, Leon or what, Max missed that three-pointer. That would have put us down by three. It just kind of rattled in and out. And then they went down and scored twice in a row, and now we're down by 10. Boom. And it's just so quick. And so that pace is so different than San Diego State, who's slower, doesn't hit a lot of threes, just kind of good defense and decent offense. And so I just thought, man, we, you know, we swept both of them at, you know, away when New Mexico State was incredible. We at did their, well at on the, the road. We oh, did well on the we road. We did incredible on the road. Good. I mean, that shows something, right? Like New Mexico State, when we beat them, was like a juggernaut. They ran San Diego State out by like 11 or 12 points. Like right and before then, we went down there. Right before right? we went down there. And then San Diego State hadn't lost at home <laughs> all year or maybe a couple games into last year. And so... And, uh, yeah, I mean, when you're Leon Rice and you're Jeremiah Dickey and you're like, hey, okay, how do we do the schedule? Because I don't know that it was the losses that hurt us. It was basically we didn't beat, I don't know, maybe if we would have beat Clemson or beat Washington State out of conference. I mean, would that have helped? I, I guess it's just so difficult to know because it's a moving target. You can beat a high net ranked Clemson at the start of the year and then they just fall all the way down by the end of the year. And now you're like, well, they were good. But our now net they're was not. still 26, right, at the, in the end? 26. And guess who's 25? Colorado. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Colorado. Well, we haven't even talked the about one Col- team. We have to play primetime now. And <laughs> I know. I, like have you looked at their last eight games? Huh. They went on a streak. They oh, beat everybody in the, the pack. Worst. Two, pack 12, whatever we want to call then it now. And they lost to Oregon in the tournament, right? They're really good, aren't they? They're really good. I think they were a six seed. Yeah, that sucks. I was hoping to play. I was hoping we were a seven seed and we were playing like a a 10 seed that was just limping into the tournament that yeah. was like fell from a three seed to a 10 seed because something went really bad. That was my hope so that we had a really good chance of winning. I mean, we're we're um, not favored to win by two and a half points. Oh, they already have a So line. far, yeah. The line's like two and a half points for Colorado. So, I mean, it's not an easy game. I really like this team. I think we can do it, but I don't know how good Colorado is. I mean, they're they're good. They're really they're good. good team. Yeah, no, they're good. <laughs> they're really good. I mean, the teams that this doesn't make sense. It's like to Memphis me. all over again, just under. Oh my and gosh, they're just going to cook us. Yeah, when I, oh, that sucks. My, my question for you two, and this is a hot topic, Ooh. and listeners, if you agree, disagree, leave us a comment. Does this win count as an oh, NCAA that's win? That's a good question. If it, we win this, is the monkey off our back, or are we just like, hey, no, you guys just did that to get into the you know tournament. You know what's sad is, so technically, it counts as a win. So the stat would be one and nine. So it would go one away. Yeah, off technically. The, they wouldn't be running that across Correct. the leaderboard. But for everybody that fills out a bracket, they would have no idea that we snuck in the middle of the night onto their bracket. <laughs> by, by Thursday morning, we just appear on their bracket. They'd be like, oh, it's, you know, yeah. Florida and Boise State, whatever. Uh, I don't know. It's like getting a hole in one on a par three course. Yeah, I agree. And you're like, do you count well, it? It went in. It was a great, it was a great hit. It was a great win. Do you count it? <laughs> it's like, everybody's like, ah, I guess so. Sure. I don't know. Colorado's freaking good. I don't know why they have a playing game at 10. Why not have a playing game at 12? I don't a 12 seed. That. You're saying a 12 seed. Why yeah. is the playing game at 10? I don't know. I, w- I wasn't going to bring it up because I didn't want to look stupid because I don't know this stuff, but it used to be a 12. Did. Yeah. Why isn't it 16? I don't. Well, 16 is is, he, is held for the... The automatic bids? The automatic yeah, bids in, like, lower, lower conferences. conferences. So, like, 16 through 14 are, like, okay, basically those. Okay. They're just, like, the punchy bag for the first round. <laughs> and then it's, like... But but to the net, can we just go look at the net? So, the last four, the last four in, Boise State, net 27. Colorado, net 25. Colorado State, net 36. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's top 60, <laughs> yeah. right? You're look, you're hoping for top 60. And if you were just to take the net and line them up, you know, we would have had a much better seed, right? Virginia net 54. I don't get that. Okay. Last four out Oklahoma, 46 Seton hall, 67 Indiana state. You ready for this one? Net rank 29 mm. and uh, Pittsburgh net rank 40. 
So do we just say know. that does that matter? So do we just say, Hey, we're in, let's be happy about that. I mean, you have to, you have to say that and you have to just hope that they play with a huge chip on their shoulder and beat Colorado. I want them to be Colorado. And then so badly, I want to be Florida. <laughs> How sweet would that, that would be? be cool. Dude, Florida just re-upped their contract with their coach for four million a year. Is that how much it is? Can you believe that for a basketball coach? I didn't realize basketball ah, coaches are making that, that much. Made. I mean, no, it's Florida, but I, that's just a random thing I saw the other day. And now we could play them if we're in. What do we pay? That's Leon? a lot of money. Like what, Nine hundred, like a million, like <laughs> almost a million. Yeah, yeah for Leon, a million. I wonder if this would push Leon out. I wonder if he's like, screw it. I'm gonna go to like Washington. I can't get where I want to go Not with the Mountain West Conference. I need to go to. The thing, but the thing is, there's such a there's such a pros and cons to that debate because you can say, look, you got in last three years in a row, and six teams got in, and not that many teams got in from the Pac-12. Indiana State didn't get in. Indiana right? State get, didn't get in, and I don't know how many teams got in from the Pac-12, but you know, Washington State, Colorado, Colorado, Oregon's in. Oregon, Arizona's in, Arizona, Arizona's four at least. Yeah, but you're going to the Big Ten now. You're playing a harder schedule. I'm assuming they're going to get a dozen teams in. The Big Ten when they're a super conference like that. Have, is it twenty four teams? 20 yeah, teams. yeah. Well, so half the conference will get in. Right. So you know, you figure a bunch of teams will get in, but I mean, it's not going to be easier. And so maybe you get more respect. Maybe you get a better seed because it's all about matchups in the in the tournament. It's like if you have a good matchup, you have a chance of winning. Like our matchup against Memphis was atrocious. We we should have played better against Northwestern. I get it. But the matchup against Memphis was just killer. And so you have to fight for a lower seed so you get a better chance at a, at least a win or a run. Yeah. Taylor, what do you think? Does the win count? <sighs> yes, I do. I don't get – I don't – if it technically counts, it counts. Yeah. Like that's how it works. You get, and I think technicality is based on you get a share of the revenue for the tournament, right, if you win. Is that – I think that's – Well, it goes from 68 down to 64. I don't know what the revenue is on those four teams. That <laughs> but that, that's the indicator that it counts to me is they're including yeah. you in the tournament yeah. revenue, so you're in the tournament. I Would think you, where it doesn't count is if you're arguing with somebody, right, about whether or not Boise State. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, with the, <laughs> the respect side of things, yeah. it doesn't count there. Would so be my, is it better to be New Mexico at an 11 and not have a playing game? Uh, yes. Well, I, I guess it's situational because of who you play. They're but playing also, Clemson. It feels like a slap a in the team. face to be the play-in, right? Like, unless yeah. you ex- we're on or already we're already expected to be a bubble yeah. team, which we weren't expecting, and nobody did. Because every every talking head has said this is like wow as well. What's no, fun? Everybody's surprised. What's funny is the bubble watch never included us. <laughs> no, Not once, never, <laughs> never. We've always been on the bubble. Watch. I felt like someone would have us in the bubble. Someone would have us a little bit higher. I, there was no mention of the bubble this year. Yeah. Because once know. we won that San Diego State game, it was like You're in. we're in. Uh, no more bubble talk. That's why I do. I freaking hate selection Sunday. And until we win a first round game, they're gonna put us in this spot. They're gonna put us at a yeah, you know, 10, 11, 12. Seed. I agree. Every single time. And I so agree. you have to break through that ceiling. I mean, it's just the huge monkey on the back. And I don't know why they did that, especially because they must not be paying attention to any articles or any projection sites. They had, they can't because everybody had us at a much better seed. Everybody did. I mean, what do they pay attention to? I don't know. I, maybe they just have this big text thread that they go off of and be like, nah, screw the mountain West, except for San Diego state. Yeah. Well, maybe this is boring real quick, but how do you, how do we look at this objectively? So they have a criteria that is linked up with net rankings, right? So it's supposedly they can't use, be linked they use to net. that, but well, and quad the, one, isn't right? Isn't that official? It's like linked to the NCAA and is not just is that some, the ranking. Yeah. It's not just some random um, stats guy who does these rankings, right? It's official I criteria, I think. I don't know. Sorry. Mark would know probably, right? Yeah. So sorry, Mark. Okay. Um, so I lost my train of thought. So, so how do you, so how do you, how do we be objective about this? So, but you can't because they're taking into prior, into account prior experience. So take, pro, take pro sports. They don't have stuff like this because the schedule takes care of it, right? It's okay. clear based on wins and losses, who gets what seeds, correct? There's no selection committee, but because there's so much more volume teams in college sports, you have to have some type of selection committee to determine rankings yeah. and seeds, right? Yeah. So when you do that, you, you build a criteria, which serves the selection committee to be able to make a selection with some type of consistency and some level of integrity, hopefully. And it also tells the teams, this is how you build in order to meet 
So then to, how would you build in. out the schedule? So is the committee acting out of integrity or consistency if they, because they have to make some type of human decision based on the eye test, right? Or because of college sports in general, that yeah. it requires that yeah. because it's different from pro sports because of the volume of teams. Okay. So are they acting out of too much bias or out of integrity if they do it based on previous years? Because we know Boise State's benefited is, football from their reputation sure. yes. with certain things, right? Is your from question previous years? Is your question does the Illuminati treat you fairly based on prior experience? The Illuminati does what the Illuminati wants. Yeah, but I think yeah, it it definitely plays a big role. You know that tournament we played in in at the start of the year where we played uh, Clemson, Clemson and, and then Virginia we Tech. and then we yeah. went and played Virginia Tech. So I don't think yeah. Clemson was part of that tournament. I don't think they were. I think it was the game we played before that tournament. We played Virginia Tech, we played VCU, and we played Butler. Mm -hmm. Yes. I wonder if we would have beaten Virginia, if we would have gotten out of the group stage, if it would, because Utah State like won a conference, like a a preseason tournament, and they're a ninth seed, and they won the Mountain West, and they won a game in the Mountain West tournament. I mean, it didn't really help them that much. Like, if we would have beat Virginia Tech, would we have? skyrocketed back up. I just, I don't think anything we could have done this year. I think you would have had to save, win multiple go of undefeated. Those games, yeah. Right? Well, we go, we beat, well, let's say, let's say we beat Washington state. We beat Virginia tech. We get into the finals. I just wonder if we'd even be, and then we had the same season we had this year. I wonder if we'd be a seven seed. <laughs> Finally, we're a seven seed. I don't know. I, you know, I, I really want the mountain West to have a breakout season in the mountain West tournament or in the March Madness tournament. This has to be the year. If we all fall on our faces, Leon's gone. I would go. Yeah. Because he just can't, he's done everything he can here. Is you, that what you yeah, mean by and, that? And, we, and we're not good. <laughs> like the Mountain <laughs> West just isn't good. We uh, just beat up on each other and everybody's like, oh, you're so good, but we're really not that good in comparison. I mean, you have to start building a team around winning a tournament game. Yeah. And, and I thought that was this, that was this team because we're tall. We got, you know, we got like four power forward center guys. I mean, we got a lot of yeah. length. We got we got depth on the bench. I don't know. So I'm looking at just San Diego State. They beat Washington. They beat Cal. Washington's not in the right. tournament. Cal's but, not but in the tournament. <laughs> right, but they won these games, right, against Pac-12 teams. Okay. They, they didn't lose them like we did. We went to go play these teams. We don't know how good they're going to be. They didn't know how good these teams were going to be. Virginia Tech, they they're not them. in the tournament, right? No. How are they not in the tournament? But they they beat St. Mary's like we did. But I don't know. Mm. And they're a five seed. And they finished, uh, what, six? They beat Stanford. They, they, beat, they finished fifth they in the Mountain Gonzaga. West. They beat Gonzaga. Okay. They beat so Stanford that's, and that's Gonzaga. that's a good win. Those are two big names. But Gonzaga wasn't as good as St. Mary's. Right. Um. But, and then they had, they finished, what, fifth or sixth in the Mountain West? Made it uh, to the I finals? Yeah. I don't know, dude. I don't. I don't um, know. I don't get do, it. Does Boise State make it to the tournament if we don't win at San Diego State? I think we're out at that point. Oh, that would be so painful. I think dude. so too. I don't think we make it in if we lost that game. If we were playing in that overtime win, yeah, <laughs> we're sitting here. It saying, was that oh, close. It was that close, right? It was. I think so. And so, I think this the seed that they gave us and the matchup that they gave us in the tournament shows that that if we lost that game, we were the last four. Yeah. In. But what about Colorado State? Why were they the last four in? Like, how did they finish the year? I think I they went on a... No, Nevada went on a run. Mm -hmm. um, they were fine. But they're 10 seed, aren't they? Yeah. But they don't have a plan. <laughs> Colorado State? Colorado Nevada. State's the plan. Nevada, yeah. does, not Nevada yeah. does not have a plan. Right. Well, is this the year know. for the Mountain West, like you were saying? So, San Diego State plays UAB. I don't know anything about them, Kay. but they're 12. University UAB's of Alabama? Isn't that what it is? Yeah. Um, the Blazers or something? Yeah. San Diego, Utah State plays TCU. I don't know. Boise Maybe. State, Colorado. Dude, Colorado. Colorado State beat Creighton. Let's not forget that. That's a really good win, man. That's yeah. an incredible win. Colorado State beat Colorado at the start of the year. Colorado State beat Colorado, 88-83. Colorado State beat Washington. Dude, they Washington. lost to St. Mary's, though. St. Mary's had a up-and-down relationship a with uh, Mount West. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I would love if... if Three wins. <laughs> Every time we get multiple teams in there, like one We've wins, lost. one wins. <laughs> <laughs> We've got. Gambled. And San Diego State's not doing what they did last year. I mean, 
not to take anything away from that. Well, they could that's win. Fluky. They could win two games. Who, who? So they're a five seed, and they would play what? What? Who would they play in the in the second round? San Diego State. Yeah. If let's say the high seed advances. So they play UAB. Right. Um, they play the winner of Auburn and Yale, I believe. Ooh, yeah, Auburn would be a tough one. Auburn's a two seed. Four. Auburn's a four seed, really? So let me pull this up. I, I want to get the right. Are you sure? <laughs> All right, sorry. Are you looking at the bracket? Oh. The <laughs> I should look at yeah, random teams. It, it was in. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I mean, it's going to be tough for us. We have to beat Colorado, which is an incredible team. And then we have to beat Florida, which their coach gets paid a lot of money. And then we'd have to beat a one seed. Okay. Well, that's probably not. So we could get two wins if we even get one. <laughs> If we, I think getting two wins would be incredibly difficult for us. New Mexico versus Clemson. Clemson's really good, and they've beaten some really good teams. But New Mexico's really good. I mean, they force some serious pace on you. And they, yeah. if their guards are hitting, they're incredibly difficult. If Dent and House is hitting, Toppin's getting rebounds, that's a tough one. Yeah. I don't know Colorado State and Nevada. I mean, they're good teams, but, you know, I don't know. Colorado State has to play and beat Virginia. Isn't that kid from Idaho, that Coeur d'Alene from Virginia? Yeah, he's on Virginia. Yeah, that's kind of cool. He played a little bit this year. Not a ton, that's but he's a really good player. Idaho connection. Yeah. Um, you were asking about who does San Diego State play? They would play, yeah, the winner of Auburn and Yale. So San Diego State's Auburn's a five. A four Auburn's seed. a four against Yale's a 13. Who squeaked out a win over Brown? Yeah, oh, I saw last that. Second shot. I saw that. Was like a, but it was like a four-footer. It wasn't like yeah, a deep no. three. Did you see that Kent State? Ending. Oh, the foul. So they went ahead and then there's like five. The guy seconds panicked left. and fouled the other team when they had the lead. And then oh, they lost. Put him on the line. <laughs> Are you serious. So That's bad. how it happened. Oh. <laughs> he just like why do you foul? Brutal. They, and they, they just have footage of the coach just losing his yeah. mind. Oh, it's just so bad. Yeah, he's not happy. Okay. They were up by three, two? Uh, they were up they by went one. up by one. With like four seconds. And, and so, so they would have had to dribble the length of the floor. The guy's taking off dribbling and he just reaches over and fouls him. <laughs> and he shot two free throws in one. Yeah. <laughs> At least that's not us, right? Yeah. yeah. And at least you don't do that in the mar- in the tournament. That's where everybody sees it. Uh, I think a lot of people saw it. Yeah, that does suck. But it's not like some of those, some of those, like I remember last year, one of the guys in the tournament, it was the lower seed. He like, they inbounded the ball and they, they had him in the corner and he just jumps and turns around and throws it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he thought like time would run out yeah, or whatever. Yeah, time would run out, <laughs> but the opposing team grabbed a shot of three and won the game. <laughs> And he's just like, yes. oh, sorry. I remember that. <laughs> sorry. That's basically like in football, running it to the one-yard line, trying to kneel it, but fumbling it, and then them running the whole way. Oh, I hope we win. Dude, I hope we win so bad. I, I hate getting my hopes up but, for these games. Like, I get so freaking nervous for basketball especially. I just – You hope we will. What are your What are your initial feelings? Because uh, just seeing I how could, we performed in the game against New Mexico – yeah, New Mexico was hot. Give them credit. We didn't care. It felt like they really cared, and we just kind of showed up. Right. And, and that's it's like, are we going to find that energy? The, here's the thing. We have to start quick. The last games I've watched in the tournament, yeah, we get down by a decent amount. It seems like early. if we can hang around and it's pretty close. We got it. At halftime, we take off yeah. in the second half. Yeah, yeah. But um, against New Mexico, we never got close. No, we didn't. But, you know, against San Diego State, we were down by 10 in the second half. We came back to win. I just think we have to start out hot, like quick. We can't wait, and we can't get down 10 points in the first half. No. Because every single time, Memphis and Northwestern, we've just gone down quick and I early. Think, I think what happens when we get down quick is that that rotation – shrinks and it feels oh, tight exactly. we play six players maybe exactly. six and a half like when we're playing and obviously when we're up by more more guys get in but when you see rj get in a little yeah. bit or when you see jace maybe contribute well, i know he's not the offensive uh, you know performer out there <laughs> no, no no i like but jace. he's just provi- not a good sign when he's playing yeah Ooh. well uh, he's gonna play he's gonna play right be, but you it would be great to to your point cam martin's gonna play yeah uh, Jace is going to play if Meadow can get in. Cause you spell these guys some yeah. good time. Yes. I mean, like Degan Hart gets out, but we need Abo to be good in the first well, we and the second half. We hardly saw Meadow against New Mexico. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Barely. Play, barely. Yeah. I think we're far too hero ball dependent. I think we have a good team with a lot of good players, but think about a lot of those big wins. It's because somebody goes off and usually it's Max Rice. And I think that's why he gets 
we stop being frustrated with him when he has those hero games, and then yeah. we get quickly frustrated because there's not, not a lot of in between for him. He just goes off and is hitting forty footers or whatever, yeah. and then he <laughs> just has sweet. average games. So it looks like there's this huge. He plays really bad sometimes versus other times, but some of those big wins, especially last year, it's because Max Rice just was out of his mind. But this year is different because Omar, Dagenhart can do it. Well, where's Omar? Abar. Omar looked terrible at the Mexico, and I'm not trying to be a critique here. I'm just this is what makes me not hopeful for a win. Is I think we're far too dependent on somebody just going off in that game. Well, what somebody, are the chances of that somebody happening? has to score 25 on our mm-hmm. team. Like somebody just has to score 25, and. You know, if it's Omar or Dagenhart, they score 25, and then you have Abo for 14, you have Max Wright for 12, you have, you know, every you have three other guys in double digits, that's how we win, you know. But if if we're struggling, if one guy's in double digits and we're down by 10 or 11 with 10 minutes to go in the first half, that's just a recipe for disaster. That's just what we've done every single year, and I just, I will become fairly depressed <laughs> if that's yeah. the case. Uh, <coughs> for sure. Just watching, just basing it off of the last game against New Mexico, my hopes aren't high. Yeah, but but look, but look, look what's happened every time we've lost a game. We, we bounced back. Around. We when we back. lost, we lost to Utah State. We went and beat U- New Mexico on the road. When we lost to Nevada, we went and beat San Diego State on the road. So I mean, and plus, I just feel like that the Mountain West tournament this year was similar to like a bowl game where it's like. For whatever reason, we just didn't have it in us to like Do you give think everything. We thought like, hey, we're already in. Yes, I believe that. Yeah. Look at Prater. Prater put in that um, article. He's like, hey, this is just a celebratory. Yeah. Ride. You know what I mean? They deserve to have an easy going. We, we just want more rest. <laughs> I guess so. But that was his article. He's like, yeah. he's like, hey, they they deserve just a a nice a stress free Mountain West tournament, win or lose, no matter what happens. And so. I mean, look, like Max Rice rode down on the plane with Johnny Mallory and, B, yeah. and BJ Reigns. We saw so the photos. <laughs> I'm sure they get the idea that it's like, hey, you guys are doing great. I mean, you could be a seven, you could be an eight. Whereas New Mexico is like, if you don't win, you're gone. You're yeah. done. You are done. And so they played all out. And they did that every single game. So hopefully they have that type of mentality on Wednesday when they play Colorado. Maybe this is like enough of disrespect where they just get so pissed and they just – Go off. On I hope Colorado. so. That would be amazing, dude. Yeah. If we just make a statement right there, it does feel like a Mad Max type game, right? Where the hair is a little bit extra wild, and he's hitting those long threes and everything. That'd be sweet. I think so. But I think we need that to win. I the hair is extra I, long. I, is that what you said? Just, just sometimes it's a little extra wild, you know, it's a little, a little bushy. Like little he's got that thick more hair body like you, yeah. So, so it depends how he runs out on the court. We're like, oh, it's on. If <laughs> it's like a faces, full, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I agree with what you said there. I think what's different this year is how we bounce back after a loss. I feel like when we would lose a big game, we're all like, oh, here we go again. You know, here's another Leon Rice team that's not as good as we think, and we kind of falter. I think that's the best case for us beating Colorado. So I think we just – I think we're going to call some Boise State magic on this. We're going to rally a little bit, a little bit of a chip on our shoulder. This is the year. I do think this year is a little bit different, and I I think – we're going to lose. I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> ouch. Yeah, we're, like, we're dead. We're, I'm calling on a little bit of BSU magic. We're going to lose. <laughs> no, I think it's going to happen, but we're going to lose by 10. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's going to be sad. and <laughs> They're going to put in all the backups. <laughs> now, I kind of want you to be depressed so you'll play Xbox with me or something. Ah, really there you go. Me, yeah. Can I can I show you a yes. story that Idaho Statesman posted? Ron Did counts. you see it? No, not Ron. Ron oh. didn't have anything to do with this one. Ron's been actually working pretty hard. Um... The Idaho Statesman, the local paper, the local news source for local happenings. What do you think? Are On Selection local? Sunday, <laughs> they're not local, 100%. Not local. Do you want to know why? This is the, this is the story they, they called posted. called us the Bulldogs, first of all? Well, this is the story they posted right after Selection Sunday, or right after the, the picks were made. Do you need to put on your hat? Your oh, hat I don't need this? to, but this is just funny. Hold on, I got what it would be did you see it no all right do you want to have any guesses on what they it's posted it's the sports team it's the sports department that posted this but they're out of california right i don't know where they're i thought it was okay. mcclatsky i thought yeah. is it who owned them this is good dude you'll love this one <laughs> okay. this is actually really good idaho statesman what do the you idaho got? statesman posted right after selection committee made their decision on boise state and they said did the kansas jayhawks get lucky or unlucky with their nc a double a tournament draw and they wrote an article about it Thank you, Statesman. Because we care. 
Here and in then Idaho. this guy, and then Maybe this guy. Maybe BJ cares. And then the guy's like, and the guy that reposted it said, the NCAA story that all Boise is waiting for from the United States. <laughs> it's like yeah. everybody wanted to know the reaction to the Kansas Jayhawks if they got lucky or unlucky. Maybe BJ is like pulling some strings over there. Like, hey, <laughs> can you guys be. report on Kansas it instead of Boise State? I mean, it's so irrelevant. And then Ron, to his credit, he's like, dude, it sucks. We don't have any pull on what mm. they put in. It's like, but come on, like geographically – you have a you have a reporter on. It's the, insulting. It a is bit, insulting. Right? Like, come get the on, paper out of here. You're just take this Idaho out of it. Just be the statesman and just be an Associated Press. Yeah, a syndicated, just grab from syndicated art or um, writers all over the country and just whatever. I mean, it's yeah. just a joke at this point, dude. Did they call them the Kansas Bulldogs? <laughs> they <chance? laughs> did. They did not. Well, it's it's frustrating. That's so fun. Any year, but this year in particular because. The hype has never been bigger for Boise State basketball no. in this year, I don't think. And oh. I think what contributed to that, too, was mid-football season when everything was just tanking and everybody was like, oh, let's move on to basketball, basketball. baby. And even though football recovered a little bit, that interest in basketball never diminished because of that. So the hype started even earlier because of the way the football season was. Well, didn't we too. break the record for amount of people attending games? Yeah. I mean, the basketball, the stadium was awesome this year. Mm-hmm. All three of us are season ticket holders, by the way. Yeah. Stadium was awesome. Uh, I want to win, and until we get a win, the monkey will be on our back. Even if we win in the first of four. Can you endure another season with <laughs> <That's tough. laughs> 0 and 10? It'd be double digits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I wonder how much change would happen in the Jeez. coaching staff. Because look at the continuity they've had. Yeah. Their two assistant coaches is Leon, and then they have a really good team potentially coming back next year. But I don't know. And I don't think the Mountain West will be this good next year. I think a bunch of seniors will move on. Ladie's a senior. A bunch of guys are seniors. I don't know that they'll be this good, but I don't know how you craft a schedule. Unless you win a game, they don't care. They don't care, obviously. They don't. They don't care. That's unfortunate because I think the hype for this year, as well as we didn't expect the Mountain West to be this good. So I think the chances of us running the Mountain West and winning the Mountain West in season and in the in the tournament were higher, I think, we thought at the beginning of the season. Yeah, that could have helped us. Yeah, it, it may be too harsh saying they don't care, right? May obviously their seating wasn't in line with what we thought, but we're in, right? And I think that goes back to what Coach Rice is saying: like, hey, we're in. We have to look at that. It's not like teams were left out, right? That we thought the yeah. six teams that we thought were going to get in for the Mountain West are in That's or true. have a chance, and so it's. I, I think it is a little bit of yeah, you're in, but you got to prove it. You haven't proved it, Mountain West. So step and up. Right. And th- and they have every reason to say that. Yeah, I agree. And it's it kind of it's like you got the seating you got because you keep showing up and you keep losing. I know. So win. But but part of that it's kind of like chicken or egg. We get crappy set matchups every time. They give us bad matchups. Yeah, I'm sorry to say that, but like the the Memphis one that was a inside Dayton job. Was a Dayton was a Dayton was a junk. Job. That was a screw job. Totally screw yeah. job. And we lost by two. And find within the last minutes, a home game, a home game for Dayton. I mean, give me a break. You can't give Dayton the play in when they're playing at Dayton. I think that's so junk. And so part of me is like this old cranky old man. It's like, ah, you're screwing me over every time. I mean, the Northwestern one legitimately was a good one. You know, we, we missed that. Opportunity. We missed that opportunity. I get it. We and hit a shot. And you take that with all the Mountain West teams that lose like crazy in the Mountain West, except for San Diego State. And they basically just said, hey, you're in. But, but man, if they had, like, a storm and we all won our first game, whoo, now Let's we're, do it. Let's now do it. we're doing it. Come yeah, on. now we have a good Mount conference. West. Yeah, that would be amazing, especially the way that we all battled and how difficult all these games were. Maybe we're primed for it. I don't know. Yeah, because I think if the selection committee didn't buy into the Mountain West hype during the season, now is the time to show it, right? Yeah. To say, like, okay, you only played each other. But now we're not playing each other, so let's step up and yeah. show who the Mountain West is. Otherwise, we fold and we hurt ourselves for next year. But if they give us better seeds, we have a better chance of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it's true. Utah State, it's they true. got screwed. They got a nine seed, yeah. one better than us, yeah. <laughs> and they won the Mountain West. And they got to the semifinals. And, you know, they're going to lose their entire coaching staff and everybody again. I mean, they didn't return a single point from I last know. year. I know, and so they may happen again. So I don't know, man. I, I, But it would be 
it would be incredible. I'm, I'm, I turn into a big Mountain West fan. I, I, I was a huge San Diego State fan. Yes. All tournament, dude. Because to be. they were they were winning us so much money with every game that they won. They won. They gave us so much money for doing that. And that's what bugged me about when BSU was really good at football. And we were, we were oh, like, yeah. lining up to in get the into the BCS. And then yeah. they would knock us off. And I'm like, dude. Don't. Don't do it. You're just hurting <laughs> yourself. Yeah. Lose. Yeah. <laughs> Come yeah. on. You're just hurting yourself financially. Right. The, it cuts both ways, unfortunately, if we do good or bad, the Mountain West teams. I don't remember his name, but do you remember the NBA player we had before Chandler Hutchinson? Um, Hutchison, sorry, I said that wrong. I don't remember. He went to Philly. The Marks guy? Oh, no, 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 no. It was no. after um, Marks, and it was before Hutchison. He was the tall guy. and he A big guy. He didn't do much in the NBA, but he yeah. was good. And we got five or Why six teams in to the tournament that year as well, and then they all did terrible. And then after that, we were only getting two or three bids, and they were yeah. saying, so I think... You're right. We have to get some wins in the Mountain West yeah. or else that bias that might be there could get even worse because yeah. of the reputation. Again, we let six in and you all lost again. Yeah, we have to win. And, you know, I think, I mean, I don't know how good TCU is. I think Utah State can beat anybody. They've just done a really good job. Colorado State, Nevada. Is it Derek Alston? No, before Derek Alston. It was, um, he played for the Nets for a little bit of time. It was Philly, I think. Well, he Nets, w- yeah. I think at both? one point he was on uh, the Nets. That sounds stupid for not knowing this, but anyway. Well, I brought it up and it knows yeah. him, so I should, well, should have done that. Yeah, go back because th- it was – I forget who the main guys were on the team. That It was him and another guy, and they were really good. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, yeah, it's like – but Utah State, they're pretty good. If San Diego State wins, okay, nobody James cares. Webb? James yeah, Webb. Him. That's, that's who it was. Yeah. The third. Yeah, the third. James Webb, the, the third. third. Yeah. yeah, he was good. Um, nobody cares if San Diego State wins. That won't affect our future because they, they are a known commodity now. Mm-hmm. They should but, win. But Utah State – Colorado State, Nevada, Boise State, New Mexico. Dude, Nevada went on a run. Remember the yeah. brothers? Yeah. The twins? Yeah. No, they went to Sweet 16. Yeah. That was sweet. It was sweet. That was awesome. I would like to do that one day. <laughs> that was awesome. I'd like to be a part of a run. Well, and who's <laughs> their – why is, who's it, is it Alston that's their coach? Alford. Alford. Steve yeah, Alford. I mean, he's proven himself in yeah. the tournament. He's UCLA and, and – uh, um, Right. New Mexico before then. And so he's proved kind of a proven commodity as a coach. And so, man, how amazing would it be if if four teams won their first game? That would right. be sweet. Let's do it then. I changed my mind. We're going to win. You're going to win. We're, We're going to win. Why not? Two. We're going to do Whoa. this. No, because yeah. just think about this. In football, when I threw my positive energy towards, like, we're going to do yes. this, it yeah. works. So let's do that. Let's. Okay. We're going to win. <laughs> this is our first win and our second win against Florida. Dude, that would be incredible. And then that's a run right there already. That is a run. It's a yeah. run. That's sweet 16? Well, a second 32. round. 32. <laughs> we won two games, we get the second round. Oh, wait, so yeah, does the playing count? <laughs> <laughs> now he's going back. Because <laughs> you win and, and now like, you're in. That's like a trivia game. How do you win two games but only make it to the second round? Right. <laughs> like To lose in the second round? All right. I don't know. I hope we win. I think we got a good team. I don't know. I, I honestly have never. I've heard Colorado's name throughout the season. I know that they've who, been up and down. Who has to step up? Dude, I'll tell you. I'll yeah. tell you. Um, Who do you, you expect to show up? Omar and Deggy have to have good games. They just they have to have good games. And then Abo and Abo and Rice, I would love to get twelve points a piece out of those guys. But if if Omar and Deggy had high teens, low twenties, and then Abo and Rice got double digits, and then we had a good game from Roddy or somebody from the off the bench or Cam Cam does well, like that's how we win. Like, if we can get points, because Deggy can get points in the paint. And if Omar's doing incredible with rebounding and putbacks, and if Abo gets the, you know, two or three threes in the first and two or three threes in the second. It just seemed like they tried to pour it on in the second half last game. Like, and I think usually Degenhardt's, I don't I don't have any stats right offhand to back this up. It seems like Degenhardt's a second half yeah, guy. Like, sure. he, gets, he gets warmed up going into half, and then he, I'd like to see him come out of the gate hot yeah the way it doesn't huh yeah Yeah. the way to beat us is if you lock down on omar quick like nevada did well the mexico did that too omar didn't Mm -hmm. have a he didn't know yeah like you if you lock down omar and then for whatever reason usually like like the nevada game that we lost they played defense down low so well and we kicked it out we were like what one for 12 on three pointers for a while and so we lost like easily so but but if you lock us down down low and we can't get any points from Abo or Rice on the outside, 
we're gonna just, we're just gonna have a tough game. Yeah, it seems like we can't survive Deggy having a mediocre or bad game. And then the other thing that seems to be a factor is is if Roddy is okay or bad. Yeah, can Roddy turn over? Finish bad, his core turnovers. shots. Yeah, if Roddy's bad, it seems like we're yeah. Tossed. Well, turnovers are a huge problem. That's mm-hmm. that's a big Achilles heel. Like our guards were horrible at the start of the year with turnovers. We'd have like double digits. Against like Clemson, against uh, Washington, you know, against a, a number of those losses were due to turnovers. Like if if we have five or less turnovers throughout the game, we'll be fine. Yeah, we had like our first five possessions. I feel like and against New Mexico. Yeah, man, turnovers. and New Mexico's tough. They are incredibly tough. But yeah, I mean, if Deggy can get points, if we can get points down low, we'll be fine. Because that's that's like sixty or seventy percent of your scoring, and then you get a few timely threes. And we go up by six, and we just kind of hold that lead for a little bit, and then you know if we if they push it and we get it back, and and that's just a great win. That's just how we've been winning some of these games. So I don't see us. It, my biggest concern is if we fall down early, like if we if we're, if we're down six or eight early, and we're never able to like really build it back, and we're always falling right in from behind. I think we're gonna lose. Yeah. We haven't talked about, maybe you did kind of allude to this with that group of coaches, but Leon and I think his, the coach's name is Tad or something. They're really good buddies. Did oh, the Colorado that? coach. They're Colorado like best Co- buddies. Yeah, they're yeah. really, really good friends. Are so they that's, really? Yeah. That's interesting. That's what Mark Few was saying. Like, they're best buds, and, like, you pit them pit against each other. Uh-huh. So who knows if that ever actually, I mean, coaches are very disciplined. Storyline? Are they doing it for storyline? Personalities, story oh, right? don't tell me a storyline again. But, yeah, that'll be interesting to see if that affects things at all. And, yeah, maybe Leon's, like, just pissed now. And maybe he has a chip on his shoulder, but also he's like, I'm done after this. And so that could, you know, playing a good friend, I'm out of here type thing. Who I knows just, how that affects him? i got to think how emotional these seasons, seasons are. I mean, because you're in a heavy grind. <laughs> yeah. Mean, most of these and games. And it's hard to win. It's so freaking hard to win. And most of these games are against really good teams. And you're beating them barely, and you're having to like consistently beat these guys, and so your emotions are just at maxed out for a, for three months, and then you get to the end and you lose a game and a play in, and you're just like emotionally spent. I mean, I just did you see his interview right after? I saw Leon's? highlights. I just saw the he, highlight. Like he usually seems pretty energetic and upbeat. He sounded tired and low energy, and maybe it's Did completely he? unrelated to yeah. what actually. You're saying after here. the New Mexico game? No, after no, the, the announcement selection. Yeah, he seemed like like, and I've never seen him like that before. He's pretty consistent at being positive and energetic. It sounds like he. he I think doesn't he feels like we got screwed. Yeah, yeah but for I, his feelings. But at the same time, I think he bet so much on the quad one wins that he's like, oh, I don't know how to do it anymore. Like, if that doesn't work, yeah. what works? Which is what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, you have to, you have to have an incredible chip on your shoulder. You just have to be super pissed. You, that's the only, that's the only chance we have because Colorado's happy to get in. They didn't know they would get in, and we are upset at our seating. <laughs> yeah. There's two different statuses. It's happening, man. Mad Max, man. He's gonna show up. The hair's gonna be flying all around. His face <laughs> is gonna be super red. He's gonna be hitting threes. If he's hitting the threes, logo. if yeah. he's hitting threes, if some somebody needs to be like 22, 24 points. I really, I really believe that Max is going to get thirty points, so we're going to win. That'd be sweet. I'm calling it right now. Yeah, I, I, I don't think Max is good for that every game. He hasn't been. Yeah. Um, but one game when he does that, and then they start, you know, cheating out on Max, and they're giving people space down low. Yeah, opens I mean, it up opens up a lot, especially if Abo can hit threes. Especially if Abo can hit threes, and he's so tall. That's why I love this team so much. Like the the height that we have. I'm just <sighs> looking at Colorado's like resume. Me. I'm not super impressed. I, like, I know they're a good team. Overall, yeah. Just the last eight and, games. And they play really in good. a good conference. What were their last eight games? I just clicked away from it. But, uh, <laughs> too, too click happy. <laughs> you know, it, did Bronny play this year at USC? Yeah. And they didn't make it. No. He, was, he wasn't even a star, though. He scored like five, six points a game or something. Did you see that ESPN game where they, they were showing USC and they had their two best players? Did you guys see that stat? No. <laughs> this is good, dude. <laughs> it was on Twitter. Anyway, they highlighted, you know how they highlight three players or a number mm-hmm. of players when they come mm-hmm. in? They show a stat, and it's like player the the player on the left, 20 points a game, 10 rebounds, senior. And then the player in the middle, it's like, you know, 10 steals, four blocks. Mm-hmm. And then they had Bronny, and they're like all-star. Bron- no, it's like all-star league. In high school or whatever. This year. <laughs> it was like he hadn't even played. LeBron's kid. Yeah, yeah LeBron's like son. LeBron's son. <laughs> Related to LeBron Genetic James. lottery. It was just so funny. Everybody's like, 
<laughs> Why would you put it? <laughs> It you almost was a huge diss to Lebr- to Bronny on that, but yeah. dude, you they didn't make it. There. They didn't make it. That's no. crazy. And Liam Campbell's going there, right? USC. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's tough. Leon man. said they have Colorado has three NBA prospects on their team. I don't know who he's talking. Do about. Do we have any NBA prospects? Uh, Ogbo. Is that how you say his name? They changed it. Ogbo. Yeah. Ogbo. Ogbo is the only one I've heard about. But you guys talked about that. Maybe mm-hmm. that's where I heard it. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When ball game came on, he was talking is, about is it. Hart, right? Is yeah, Degenhardt, yeah. Hart, is he an NBA prospect? Maybe next year. He's not going, is he? Is he is no, he's, he's, he's a junior, and yeah. so is Stanley's uh, a junior. I don't, I don't think so. Degenhardt's not big enough or fast enough. I don't yeah. think. He's bigger than Abo. Yeah, but, but isn't that I what they said in high school? Play. Isn't that what they said in high school? He's like, he's not big or fast. Or Maybe, but... Like, who, there's not there's so few of those stars in the NBA. That's true, right? I, then then if he's not so if Abo is just a three and D guy, which is what Mark said, just like hit some hit some threes, D it up really good. That's Abo. We don't have anybody else that's a an NBA prospect. I don't think so. What about San Diego State? Is Ladie an NBA prospect? Sure. Okay. I I, I, maybe we don't know anything about NBA prospects to know. But I haven't like, looked at them. How many NBA prospects are in the Mountain West? Stevens with Colorado State. You can chime in. What at about? Any point. Uh, <laughs> I don't. Uh, you guys uh, what, what about Blackshear? Is he? I don't, dude. Did you see Blackshear at BSU hit that three or try to shoot that three? No. <laughs> did you guys I'm watch the it. game? No. Dude, it's so funny. I don't know what you're talking about. So the, apparently Blackshear doesn't like shooting outside threes, and he and was baseline, showed. and it was baseline, and he like forgot how to shoot <laughs> and then it hit the side of the board and everybody started laughing they're like yeah he doesn't want anything <laughs> anyway i don't know what blackshire is i don't even know how good blackshire is like I, i've seen him he did okay against bsu I've, i haven't watched who, him play who am i thinking of though who's uh maybe great osabor yeah osabor i think is that's his first name great is that interesting i think it's more interesting that osabor is like, the last name okay <laughs> all right <laughs> Why? Okay, all right. Like G R A T E, like great, great, great. Yeah, or G R E A T, like G R E A T. Oh, yeah, like chosen, like Cam Newton's son. He named him chosen. <laughs> he just like, chosen. just like you are great, child. Did It'll be excellent. Cam Newton got in that fight at that frisbee golf he tournament. Destroyed those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we talked about frisbee golf last we? week. Oh, we didn't talk about the Cam Newton. It was like one on five. Um. I don't know how many NBA prospects we have in the Mountain West. So if there's three NBA prospects on Colorado, but again, it's, it is what it is. If they're hot, if they're a hot team, they're going to do well. If they're struggling or if they just don't have an identity, then, then they're not going to do well. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it takes to win a game in the tournament because we've never done it. <laughs> Wait, that doesn't make sense. I'd like, like, I you don't, don't know what it takes from Boise State. Yeah, Boise Because like, I think you've seen enough games where well, teams have it's won. Like, I, don't, I, just, I watch the games, but I don't know the players. Like, I don't know how well they've done all season. I don't know like what type of games they have. I just watch them, and I'm like, wow, that's a really good shooter, or that's a really good player, or from what the announcers say. So like, I, yeah. I know the Mountain West pretty well, and I know, obviously, Boise State really, really well, and I just don't know – if it takes NBA caliber players to win all the way through. Right. I don't know. I don't That's know. the point. Is it just because it's a big stage? Is that too? Because it seemed like all the critiques of Leon Rice melted away this year, whatever they were. But maybe there's a critique to be said is he just can't get his team ready for the tournament. But I mean, we've won Mountain West tournament games. We've won big games. Yeah. So I don't see how that would make sense that he can't just all of a sudden coach and get his team ready <sighs> for a tournament game. I always thought it was up to like length. Like the height of your team and your depth, it's like if and you the have breadth. and the breadth <laughs> and the width, <laughs> the girth. all dimensions. Yeah, it's a multi-dimensional <laughs> game. But like, if you have a lot of height, girth. Yeah, if you have a good girth, <laughs> you typically those play like the average girth does well. It's it should be factored right alongside the net of a team. What's their girth? How much girth they have? Yeah, Stop it's girth. Girth is like. <laughs> Is that from like your chin down your <laughs> That's a girth. That's not girth. That's your girth. I think that's your girth. I think it's a stat that should be on the back of basketball cards. <laughs> your girth. None of none of the, nobody knows their girth. <laughs> nobody knows their girth. And they should. But if you're we but if you're tall, of girth awareness. If you're tall and you have a good bench, typically yeah. you can do well, right? I think that was a big thing in the game against so, New Mexico. We didn't have any bench. Well, yeah. And it's that's been a always, problem. That, that one portion has been Leon's I, cr- criticism for forever. And I think it's not and that this our, year has been different. It's not that our bench 
really excels and stands out or will even, you know, sometimes be better than our starting five, the measurement that we're looking for is can they not be as bad, right? As, as, a, as like, they're not a liability. That's yeah. What you're can they be for, less right? of a liability yeah. rather Dude, than top producers? We had like zero bench points compared to their 12 in like the first had, half. Yeah, or, that's right. You know, it was just like, well, they have a quick hook. They get pulled quick when they yeah. make a mistake and it's a tight game. Well, that's yeah. why I groaned when you talked about Jace. Because I thought Jace played good minutes as a backup last year. I don't know why that's different this year, but I feel like it's a bad sign if he's in. And, and yeah, Jace has had games where he's not great, right? But he's had games where he'll chip he in. Shots, yeah. He'll chip in a three. He'll put in, you know, he'll drive to the basket. And I think those are the types of things that if he's doing that, we're looking good. Yeah, I don't but know. when Jace is turning it over or Roddy's like, you know, turning it over as well, then Which it's is generalized just to guard play, right? Guard play is the weakness. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Cause that's where the liability comes in is if, if Roddy's not playing well, then we have to play Jace. And if Jace isn't any better and his liability is well, well, it's like you look at Jaden house and dent, right? We don't have anybody like those guys. No, but nobody has anybody like those guys. Well, uh, I, I think we're further away from some <laughs> that's teams. True. Right. That's very true. <laughs> but Roddy is not house. Ro- Roddy's not dent. He's not, cool. He doesn't finish like those guys. I, I think he has potential and he's totally. getting better. Yeah. Yeah. But he doesn't finish very well. No. Uh, uh-uh. um, he should just dunk it every time. He yeah, dunked nice it dunk. in the Mexico game. That's that, crazy. I, I actually loved. I actually loved what he did to Dent to House at the end of the game. Did you guys see that? House went up oh, for a dunk. The foul. Yeah, he went up for a dunk and like. I don't think it was dirty. No, it wasn't dirty. I don't. I mean, it, there was I some stuff be. on the ground. Sure. I think I could be a little biased, but you step up in that situation. Like, Dude, what's he going to do? Stand and watch just him? Give up, exactly. Yeah. Give and up. so I thought I loved that. Like that gave me a ton of respect for. For Roddy. I like him. It's like, dude, that's sweet. Like, that fired yeah. me up, which yeah. I think you need that. I think you need those guys that are like... You kind of wish that play would have happened, like, in the first quarter or first half, though. You do. First part of the first half. You do, but, you know, whatever. That game is what it is. But um, I, I wish so bad that Jace was averaging five or six points a game. Like, Can I, can I say one thing about Jace hmm. and his um, oh, uniform his apparel. preference? Yeah. Okay, what are you, you were, this? I don't know what you're talking uh, about. You were upset so about this. He wears black shoes with black socks. He reminds me of like a summer league referee. So I wouldn't have known unless you pointed it out. Oh, crap. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Let yeah, me see. But your socks Let aren't sticking see. out above your shoes. Let me see. And you're not on the uh, Boise State basketball team. on the camera? Uh, They're black and blue. Ankle, ankle length socks is, the yeah. same thing? is different. They're, That's a Those faux are pas? like no shows. Yours are no shows. That was a faux pas. Uh, I just think for him it doesn't work. <laughs> so I would vote for a, a change. A lot of stuff probably doesn't work for Jace. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Go easy on it's him. It's a tough. It's a tough <laughs> role he's got. No, I'm just. I'm probably cut from the same cloth as him. Is what I'm saying. So like a lot of things don't look as good on me as they may have uh, as other people. So that's all. I I'm just want to see him with some maybe white shoes, different colored shoes, but it's always all black with whether it's home or away. Really, black shoes, black socks. I think you should mix it up. Okay, well, I'll look for were, that on Wednesday. If you were a college player, would you have your? I mean, Carol Cam, Cam wears like the orange shoes. I've seen those. Well, you know, would they're like you, mostly orange. Would you have cool tattoos? Sorry, Brandon. Cam, Cam's tattoos are cool. Yeah. Would you pre-approve your apparel before you went on the game? What do you mean, like ask for opinions yeah. on it? But not like from fans, from a trusted source. Um, like Tyler Crow. <laughs> like, Crow. <laughs> I'm just saying, like. I like mean, a girlfriend like, or something? Like right now, I ask my wife. Like she Yeah, well, your wife has incredible style. Yeah, she looks at what I wear before I go to work. Exactly. Well, Jace doesn't... Does Jace have that? He should text me. Well, I can text your wife. wife. Exactly. exactly. That's, that's I don't want thing. Jace texting my wife. Let's get, <laughs> let's get him on the podcast. Yeah. Get Jace on here. To talk about apparel he, stuff? Yeah. All right. Did you see... Sorry for <laughs> tangent. Did you see Danielson roast Zion... Williamson on Twitter. Did um, he? Yeah. <laughs> There's a picture of them jumping. Like that thing. Oh, they do they I jump, saw that. I saw and that. And Danielson was higher than him. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? I can't remember what he said, but that was pretty funny. Are we going to talk football at all? Uh, not that um, I'm pressuring I it, saw we, that. We could be over, but. Dude, I wanted to say something about Danielson. Me too. What you got, Taylor? Well, I, I think it might be the same thing Brandon was thinking, so I'll let him run with it. No, you can go. Well, it's just that. I'm so impressed with him, and I only continue to feel more positive about football just because of the human being that he is. Um, and he said, some uh, of what Bolt said. Go ahead. He, he posted he posted a picture of him and Zion Washington jumping, <laughs> and he's like, "Higher vertical jump?" Question mark. Because <laughs> he looks high. He looks up in the air. Yeah, you love off the that ground. kind of stuff, though, from coaches. Yeah. No, I was going to go on something else. 
Okay. Well, no, 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 I'm saying us in general. Oh, everybody yeah, yeah. In general. Well, it's so opposite you, than but. what um, Andy was at, or even Harson was at. Dude. Yeah, it's like have a little fun. Oh, dude, yeah. absolutely. Well, incredible interview with Bolt, by the way, to get him to kind of, because he was with, not that he was withholding, but he shared a little bit about what it was like yeah, last yeah. year when the firing happened, and he alluded to people were tight, which means, which starts kind of at the top, right? And so the fact that Danielson just put everybody at ease, made everybody feel safe, and safe's overused, but just everybody could cut loose. Relax, yeah. Relax, and you saw it on the field, so I was glad you guys got him to kind of talk about that, because he yeah. validated what we thought, Yeah, is it was just tight in there. Yeah, totally. I, I mean... He alluded to the fact that under the prior head coach, things were miserable. Mm -hmm. And it was a well-known secret that mm -hmm. things were miserable. And what surprises me is, and this is what I think is super fascinating. There were people in the community that were bashing um, critics of Avalos. That were saying things like, you vape in your parents' basement. like, <laughs> And they would say stuff like... Like people said that about us. Yes, about us. And, ba and bashing on Avalos. Well, and yeah, some people did. Well, you would be, you would say this is not good, and you could see with your own eyes this is not good. The offense isn't good. The team isn't playing well. You're all over the place. And we would say that, and then and the argument was, what do you want to do? Switch coaches every year? And they would say that, or they're like, no. Or the thing that got me was they would say this is the coach to lead us out of it, but somehow they didn't know that he was the worst person. To be in that situation, like yeah. he lost control of everything and everybody was against him. All of the coaches, the players hated it. And in the situation that he had developed got so toxic that they had to get him out. Right. So that one coach, that one assistant football director was fired, Lou Majors. Mm -hmm. Major. And that was like the, the straw that broke camel's back. And it just surprises me that the people were so gung ho. I mean, honestly, it reminds me of like some of the, the things that happened during COVID. It was like, they knew for a fact that this is the way out. And then when we look back, it's like, no, nah, that wasn't the way out. Mm -hmm. And so that was what's interesting about Avalos. But what I was, what I was going to say about Danielson, he posted that he was, he was at a tennis match. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought you were going to say. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, to me, <clears throat> so endearing mm -hmm. because he knows that you need to support other people to get support back. And what I love about Danielson is he understands how to be like that really shows leadership. And I don't know what he does in the, in the back offices. I don't know how he acts, but up front, I see it. And just to your point, I'm really happy for him. Like I'm really pulling for him and I want him to do so well. And I want him to be here and have a ton of success. And I don't know I, f I felt like Avalos was going to do a good job. I felt like, you know, I was behind him for a long time, but this is different. Yeah, Like the Danielson thing to me is different just because that type of enthusiasm is contagious, man. Going to a tennis match on like a Saturday morning or whenever it was, taking your two kids and posting and be like, here to support my the team. Yeah. That's a big thing. I mean, he's he's the highest paid employee in the state of Idaho. Yeah, he doesn't need to do that. He doesn't need to do that. Mm -hmm. And he's busy. He doesn't see his family very much. He's incredible. The spring ball's going. He's busy. Yeah. yeah. And so that it, means something it, to me. It almost like, I love it. Right. And you, you, all the things that we've talked about that have happened in the off season, building up to this season of, you know, all the recruits, you know, Malachi Nelson, all that stuff. Um, getting Dirk back, all these great things. And to me, it feels like, is this too good to be true? Like when's the other shoe going to yeah, drop type of thing? I, I don't want to be uh, cynical or skeptical or, because I love it. They're all good things. And I agree. I'm rooting for Danielson. I love it. You can feel it as a fan when leadership is headed in the right direction. Because, yes, when Avalos was there, there were those signs. And it was kind of like, well, maybe we just don't know. Maybe we don't have the viewpoint that other, others see. And I think yeah. that makes me question the people that were saying, no, he is the leader. Like, what was their viewpoint? What were they seeing? Because I don't think they were seeing the whole picture. And they well, were like calling us out saying you know um, we don't know you know what it taught me it's like trust your eyes yeah like trust what you're seeing because that's tangible well there was a lot of awkward interviews the whole we're gonna run to win and just like it didn't feel oh, yeah. you, you just felt the stress you felt the pressure and i think danielson he's not gonna be a hundred percent like he's not gonna share everything but i think he's pretty upfront with a lot of stuff and yeah. he he provides visibility into things that maybe Avalos yeah. wouldn't. And I think that's respectable. And 
It's going to be really interesting to see, and I'm just really excited to see what he does. How many games, how many basketball games have you been to? I went about half of the home yeah. ones. I really faltered towards the end. Yeah. What, the about, kids, what about the last few years? You, would you go to a decent number of games? Like you've, I've only had season tickets the last two years, so okay. I went to most games the last two years. Okay. Um, we went to a number of games, and my kids love going down to meet the players. Mm. And guess who's there and has taken pictures with my kids? Danielson. Danielson. Yeah. Yeah. Like legit puts his arms around him, takes pictures, signs stuff every time. I never saw Avalos there. Yeah. I'm not saying he wasn't there. Well, last time I was on the podcast, it was when he was interim and we were kind of talking about whether we want him or not. And I was on record saying, I like what he did against Utah State because it was right before the championship game. So I didn't have that to to judge from yet. I didn't think he was the right selection. I thought we could do bigger, bigger splash, whatever. But Like we were settling maybe a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. But I don't feel that way anymore because of all these things we're talking about. But... I think he's the closest thing we have to like a second coming of Peterson. Oh. I, don't, I don't think he's a. Hold sub- on, write this down. I don't. Hot take. I, and I'm not saying he is that. I'm saying he's Feels the closest like possibility yes. to that we could possibly have because he does it right and he works in this era. I think because he is so genuinely loving. Like his, the Mountain West Championship game and then the hirings and the recruits we've gotten since then and then his press conference. Now. And him just, his ability to speak to why he is the way that he is, and it's because he believes in a higher power type thing. And I'm not trying to say that's why or whatever, but he's very genuine yeah. and loving for the right reasons. He's not trying to manipulate or win anybody. He's not a salesman. He loves this team, and he loves the players, and he's going to tennis matches. <laughs> and he, so he's yeah. going to work in this era because where we're at a disadvantage, we don't have millions of dollars to get the recruits with um, NLI stuff. Is that what it is? NIL. 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 But – the amount you can still get a football player because you can win them over because they trust you. I think we have the advantage there over all these other teams because he is so genuine and so much of a good leader. And he can make up that gap where we can't with the NIL, I think. Yeah. Well, I, Bolt, I, Bolt said, like, we probably don't have Genty here if it's not for Danielson. Yeah. And we know that a lot of other schools would have offered him a lot more money than we did. So, heck yeah. I mean, yeah. a lot of credit to Danielson I there. Think, you know, there, there's something too in the real world. You're like, my manager dictates a lot of my happiness at work. You know, like if you hate your boss, yeah, you're out. That's the number one predictor. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And so you can find a new boss pretty easily. And yeah. now you can find a new coach pretty easily, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so the amount of coaches that came back, but I, to your point, like Peterson was an up and coming guy, you know, who's young. same amount of timing. Yeah. Maybe. Would you consider Danielson a in-house hire, like a Bronco guy? He'd been there like this is the seventh year, right? Or yeah. I don't know what the how you define that or not. I don't know. He I mean, is else, he right? an o- yeah. is he an OG OG? No, but yeah. like he was with Avalos the was. Yeah, Avalos <laughs> was because he played here. I, you have to say no, I think, because he's not a previous player and he's not from the Hawkins tree or the Cutter Peterson tree, tree or yeah. Peterson tree. He's or a Harson tree guy, right? Because he hired him in yeah. as a rando, right? <laughs> yeah. Nobody knew. Yeah. I don't know where he, I don't even know where he came from before that, do you? Wasn't he just a really small school, like division? I don't know. Mm-hmm. We should look it up, yeah. but I thought it was a where really small school. Where he played? Where he was he coaching coached before, before he came this? Because mm-hmm. he was at Azusa Pacific, I think. Um, yeah, powerhouse. That's where he, <laughs> yeah. You know, part anyway. of me, can I go tinfoil hat? Yeah. Do, please do. Can I you don't, put the hat on though? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Do you want me to do it for you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll grab it. I'll grab it. All right. I don't want people yeah, to get Yeah, it's a Pacific th- before Boise State. Is that where he coached? Yeah, and played there. I don't want people to get mad at me <laughs> <laughs> for this. You should really say what you're about to say. <laughs> this is really we, we may need to cut this. I just... <laughs> I, I don't. Your little hair sticking yeah, out of the front. Leave it, leave it. I'm so right. jealous it looks right great. now. All right. Uh, here's what I think. Taylor would kill for that little <laughs> I hair would. sticking out. I'm going to. <laughs> we just do. We got to give you this and give you patches. Yeah. I mean, I do all right, but I'd be way better looking at my hair. Yeah, you would. Thank you. Um, Wear the hat. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the same. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you're not if you're not watching us on YouTube, you're just listening to us. You need to see you're missing this. You're missing. You need to get over on YouTube. Can I see? I, this may get some people upset with me, and that's okay. Um, we growing up in football, there wasn't a lot of precautions on helmet to helmet hits, or tinfoil hat to tinfoil hat, or tinfoil hat to tinfoil hat, or Illuminati or any of that. So there was a lot of 
He like, doesn't have his headphones on. <laughs> no, that's fine. There was a lot of, but but listen, listen, here's where I'm going with this, okay? Because if you grew up at the time that we did, and a lot of these coaches, the age that they're at, if you were a linebacker, fullback, lineman, your head took a beating, like a really hard beating. Oh, I know where you're going. I just wonder how many coaches that that played in high school, that played in college, that possibly played some NFL, that were banging heads hard, that had some CTE on there. And if things get like super high stress with the amount of money that people are paying, with the amount of stress, if the program's going bad, if anger and frustration, maybe some of that is dictated from like um, a development in your brain that is just like CTE related. I wonder if that could be a factor with some of these coaches. Like if you're super angry, but if you're super Danielson played college ball, is it? Is yeah, it just, but what did he play? Is he a big linebacker? Like, is like what did he play? Cornerback, receiver. Uh, let's see. Like some of these coaches that were cornerback. Uh, he was a linebacker. Oh, I can't respond how I want to this because if you're worried about you're going to get canceled, what you're going to say <laughs> I'm. I have a couple of different ways I can get canceled in my response to that. I just uh, wonder, like, if you have CTE, say, yeah. say, if you yeah. have CTE which is, I, I think, a real thing. And, you know, I was talking to an unna- unnamed XBSU player, and he played linebacker, and he's like, I don't know if it's my CTE. And he was saying this out of jest, but he's like, I lose my patience so fast anymore, like at the drop of that, of a tinfoil hat. <laughs> and uh, he's like, I don't know if that's the case. We were just kind of joking around about it. But honestly, dude, like that guy who's 38 or 37, I mean, we grew up in the time where it's like, here's your helmet right here. This is what you tackle with. This is how you knock them over, right? And, you know, our coach was like, hey, keep your head up a little bit. But you didn't ever get in trouble. There was no targeting. You know, targeting is fairly recent yeah. relatively. And so you could have put in your main years just hitting. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> that, that stuff's hard to measure, so I have a hard time. Incredibly. It's impossible exactly. to measure. And yeah. I, I don't deny... CTE, but I do think it's incredibly overblown and sure. is a thing to steer people away towards being overly safe and overly cautious, which is not how we should be living our yeah. lives. We should be living a life of abundance and doing all those things. So that's my you very know, safe take on who is the guy who is the guy that went to Highland? Leave, leave comments directed at Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> no, who is the guy that went to Highland and he he was on ESPN and he was a stealer and he was fullback um, and he was on ESPN for Mark a really Schleier? long time. Oh, I don't know. Oh, was that Mark Hodge, 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 oh, Merrill yeah, Hodge. Merrill Hodge. He he talks about. He talks about. Forgot, he's right? he's like CT is not real, and he's like CTE is kind of oh, way overblown. So yeah. I don't I don't know what is what people would say yeah. is what he would say, and so I don't know what's some people or Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Some people do. Just some people. I know his his point was like he would they were sending in lab samples to the one specific lab, uh-huh. and they labeled everything as CTE, but all the other labs didn't. And so, was it I the get same that. lab Barry Bonds worked with? No, that's Balfour a different one. Balfour, yeah. I don't know. I don't that know what's real joke, about that. Taylor, that was a joke. I didn't <laughs> that's trying to like <laughs> cut through the thing. I, I don't know what's real or not on that. But I'm just saying, like, you know, maybe maybe you could have a little bit of head trauma, or maybe you're just getting old. I just think no. the amount of stress that some coaches are under yeah. when things turn south, it's tough to turn around. Sure, but I also I get that, angry because I don't have my crap together and I didn't play football either. So it's so hard to measure and actually, and which is why you said it, you don't know. Could be sleep, could be nutrition, could be right. exercise. So to overreact or over comment on what you just said, I'll try and be succinct on it. But what was what brought the greatest amount of attention to CTE? It was that movie, right? Yeah, by Hollywood. <laughs> so are we? Is if and so what does Hollywood do often is they try and bring attention inflate, yeah. and inflate and overreact and they try and be virtuous when they're not actually being virtuous things right. like that. And so if we build a generation of kids that are overly safe and overly cautious, it will weaken human beings and it will Ooh, demasculinize. You're going deep on No, that. I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm skeptical of things that make people less adventurous, less masculine, mm. all those things, because I do think there's agendas to weaken human yeah. populations to control them. Right. Speaking of Illuminati and conspiracy theories. Bro, hey. Does, is Give this me one, the hat, man. Hey, dude, this, you got it. Is this one size fits all or? Right. Oh, that looks You got to take the. Over the head. <laughs> That's a crown. <laughs> I uh, So to your point, I'm all in on that. Yeah. Um, I do think that football has gotten better and improved because, man, so much. I got so many headaches in, in high school football. And I was, I played outside the, the, the box. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 
But, you know, the guys that were linemen, your hands to the hel- helmet were every play, like yeah. slamming and hard. And then, right. like, your one of your best friends, Ben Douglas, I have so much respect for him because... Oh, yeah, he got jacked up. He got... I mean, he was a punching bag <laughs> for <laughs> one of the best players yeah. in the state. And for two or three years, Ben was a... a Scout team linebacker. Yeah. And had to fill the gap on He had a, a bad knee too. Yeah. Well, and he would just he had to fill the gap on this kid that was a, just a freak of nature and just pounded Ben into the ground. Who was that? John Helmendoller. Oh, jeez. And so that's a tough that's a tough fill. And Ben did it, mm-hmm. you know, and every day and they'd have these inside line, you know, drills that they would just pound each other over and over and yeah. over, fullbacks and linebackers, and you just take that pounding. Yeah. And I think they've gotten a lot better on the yeah. football aspect of it. Yeah, and not trying to deny that injuries happen, CET exists, or sure. whatever, but I do not think that less kids playing football is a good thing. I think that it's incredibly good to go out and develop these totally. skills and teamwork and all yeah. those things. So are we ahead by saying, because we scared a lot of people away from playing football. Yeah. Or, or we pushed a lot of people playing flag football instead of Yeah. You know, and flag, uh, flag up to a certain point, you know, middle school. Yeah, it is a good thing, I think. Anyway, this sorry kinda, for the tangent. If sorry if this. No, that's fine. Bad, I went on that yeah. tangent on that one. I mean, we can see viewers dropping off. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> so the hat. Everybody, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I love Danielson. I I really hope he has a ton of success. Like it would be great if he did really well this year. It would be incredible. I think we all agree with that. Yeah. And I think he's off we to an incredible that. start. Like, I think he's off to incredible. In, in a lot of ways, he started like Dicky did, where Dicky was really over involved, yeah. posting a bunch. And the prior AD, you never heard from him if you didn't golf at a country club. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Apsy was the he was a tough one, but well, uh, that's why it probably made him a good candidate for Dickie. Is he? They have the same energy. They're willing to do the same things, and that's what's re- unfortunately what's required yeah. of a football coach these days. I think it absolutely is. He has to be out there winning the fan base over, which the Boise State fan base has had a hard time with. You in particular, right? Like, well, it got cold. Yeah, Harson got and cold, Avalos. and then Avalos uh-huh. it got really cold. Feels warmer now. It's starting to thaw. Feels nice. Yeah, starting Feels to thaw. Because nice. remember Hawkins? Remember when we saw him at Albertsons? Like Dude, shook that guy his hand was and awesome. talked to him, right? Like we don't. We he was did, so great. You don't think that would have happened with Harson or Avalos? And let's say we maybe, have. A, maybe. Say we underachieve next year. Say we go eight and four and completely miss expectations. I think Danielson gets much more grace because he is like the conference. The press conferences don't get super awkward and mm. like angry. You know who who can narrate a lot of the message is the media and if you can influence a good media, like i don't know if avalos did great with that with the media relations but i think danielson if he's like open you know and he lets access to players more i think avalos i mean he shut down access to a lot of players well danielson's done that already right didn't he like um open up access that 60 second can speech that avalos would do on fridays before the game or something oh and they couldn't ask questions they couldn't ask questions danielson was like let's talk and they would let him record it interesting yeah, and he's he's kind of like I'll give you the information that I can give you, right? Rather than just saying like you can't ask questions, he's like I'm not going to tell you everything, but yeah. I'll give you what I can, yeah. and I think that's the right approach, dude. I, I I got turned off really bad at the end of Harson, but I knew Harson. I'd met him a couple times. He was good in person. He was really good in person, especially before he left BSU. I knew him before he left BSU a little bit, but when he got a little preachy with the Twidiots comments. Dude, the Twidiots, that was a bad time that for was. BSU. <laughs> that, was, that was a fight I for me. I agree with them, though. I'm on I the know you other did. side of that I video. know you did. Yeah. I know. I, dis- I totally disagreed. With every ounce of my body, I disagreed with that. Because you took it personal. Like, what he's saying is, is people on Twitter, are we really supposed to take what they say? Like, it has any value or meaning anywhere? Well, why, why did he pay attention to me? Why can't I, if I'm invested in the program... And if I'm going to games, why can't I say what I feel? Yeah, and you can. And then so why does he like, they're dumb. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm seeing this. Yeah. You guys suck at this. Oh, you're dumb. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why am I dumb? Because you do suck at that. Right. I think it's gravy if you do that. I think that's why I like Danielson so much, right? I don't think he actually has to do that. But when he does, it has a big impact. I don't think it's actually part of the job. I think, I think coaches should not, should not read comments. <laughs> don't well, read comments. Well, dude. we don't know if he was, though. Was he? Yes, 100%, because yeah. he was blocking people, yeah. including this that, loser okay. right here that was sitting right there. Mark Moss. Mark got blocked instantly from Harson. I don't okay. know if he got unblocked. That's true. That's true. No, he, yeah. he, was, he took those things serious. I, like Peterson, I don't think, and from what I've heard, right. he didn't care, or nor did he let people on social media anyway, right. but he didn't pay attention to that. Right. But from what we hear, people would write, like Dave Southorn said, people would write, 
Southern. an article. Southern. Oh, I remember. That was a good insight. Yeah, yeah. and he'd be like, Harson would text be like, dude, what the hell are you two talking yeah. about? That's not true. And Dave's like, are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's a good bro, point. calm and down. I don't know stuff like that, so I try not to react until I actually know stuff like that. And that's a good point that he, Harson was overreacting, I think. Or I think. Or reading the things he shouldn't have yeah. done. Yeah, and, and that's pretty natural. Right? Like, if you're interested in it and people are criticizing right. you, I get that. Well, it's very human, and I can relate. Because how would I handle myself in that type of situation? I don't know how well I would or not. So I like to try and have compassion for them, but it doesn't mean it was good that they handled it well. I think yeah. if you look back, you have 10 years' experience of knowing about yeah. Twitter, Fair. and you just know that comments just aren't going to get you anywhere. Mm -hmm. But if you're making 2 or $3 million a year, just don't worry about the comments. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you're saying stuff you that know? everybody already knows. It's like, we know we're not experts. Yeah. Sure. Right? Exactly. And it's like, exactly. you don't need to insult people. Right. It's like, we're just dumb people <laughs> spouting <laughs> off, right? Saying, like, oh, we know everything about football. We're Monday morning yeah. quarterbacks. And then you got a coach telling us we're Twitty. It's like, yeah, okay. Like, uh, I, you're taking this way too seriously. Did he I, coin that phrase? Did that exist I, before? Did he come up with uh, that? I don't know. Was that a local thing or was that national Twitty thing? I mean, that's Twitty pretty it's. good. <laughs> pretty <laughs> solid marketing on it. It's, it's still around. It's still around. It's in our hearts. The next, <laughs> <laughs> the next best thing, it's, the it's next best thing was hearts. the vaping in the basement. That vaping. was the next best thing. That was all quest, right? Yeah, yeah, that was the next best. Is thing. Is he on your crap list now because of that? No, I mean, I, 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 from all quest, we'd, we'd have Tommy on the pod, right? Tommy, that'd be great. Um, I think Tommy's. So what? If you made it an hour and thirty minutes are, into this, are we too far? Do we need to? Look yeah, at sorry. That's <laughs> the, the Taylor. My effect. thing about all quest, like I, he's one of the top five guys in Idaho right now, essentially, yeah. right? Like influence wise. And you got to think he knows a lot about BSU mm -hmm. and because you see him on the court, uh, like courtside tickets. I'm assuming he has a suite for BVA. Like he's done really well. Mm -hmm. And the thing that fresh that confused me was he was leading the charge. Avalos is the guy. Avalos is the leader. Yeah. Avalos is the guy. You can't not go with Avalos. He's the best guy. When the reality was the opposite, it was the exact opposite. So I, I don't know what messaging he was getting. Yeah, I don't know. Because the reality was Avalos was the worst. And, and what, did he really know the situation or was he just standing up for the program, right? Just saying like, hey, this is the best thing to do for, let's just not freak out. Let's not panic. I don't know. Not that I always do this well, but I always want to operate out of fact. So I just didn't know. I could speculate that. The locker room was like that, and Avalos was like that. But I didn't know hardcore evidence. And like you said, it was the best-kept secret. So there was a lot of smoke, but that doesn't mean I actually know exactly what's going on. So I don't arrive at saying yeah. Avalos is the problem until I actually know that. So that's how I can sympathize with something he would say like that. But, it, but if you – but if you, I'm just assuming if you're a big booster that you have access to the team yeah, and you have access to behind-the-scene content, right? Dude, you got to get more players on here, and you got to grill them. We got to find out. It's tough to get it's active cool. players, yeah, though. Yeah, you don't want to put them in a tough spot, you know, because you can't. I, I agree, and you guys did a good job riding that line, I think. But I, I, but I, that's what that's what frustrated me with with um, Alquist because I was, you know, you you look at it, you're like, wow, he must know something that we don't, because my eyes are showing me that this team's falling apart, and I don't. And if that's the case from a business perspective, typically it's at the top, and then you know, assistant coaches would leave and then players are like, this sucks. And then everybody's really frustrated and you're like, what's going on? This is really bad. And then, you know, when, when you correct that and these coaches start coming back. Oh yeah. yeah. Cause that Freaking one leave wild, during Avalos dude. and then come back. Yeah. Right after. Stacey Abra Adams or That's something. Crazy. Collins or Stacey Collins. Collins. No, Dan Daniel's Danielson's real, man. He's, he's the real deal. I yeah. think he's just so genuine. And I think actually, competent and he's nuanced i think that's what's so great like that's what i really appreciate yeah. he can stand in front of the media and speak to the media and the fans and tell them as much as he possibly can while still telling the truth and not getting angry or defensive or whatever but then still be the leader of not sharing everything to protect the team yeah, as well right. alos is probably trying to overprotect the team and maybe that's what he always said he was doing yeah, and he apparently he micromanaged everybody yeah which is not a good way to run your organization <laughs> right well, you and know? that's what I think that gives Danielson the best chance, right, is I trust him to be an exceptional leader at the top, be a CEO, yeah. and then bring in the right talent that are yeah. going to do the right things. I trust him to make all those decisions, even when he keeps having turnover. Yeah. I mean, you got to assume that you're already recruiting your next offensive coordinator. Yeah, you got to be. You have to be. You got your one-year clock is ticking. You're, yeah, and so you, gotta, you just have to be able to trust your coordinators 
and Avalos didn't. From what we've heard. We're still <laughs> reading saying things a little bit, right? Like we, like we, there's enough evidence to suggest that, I think. But we don't know that for fact yet, right? Because no, we just hear a little no bit of information, right? Just audio. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's crazy. Off the record. <laughs> yeah, it's just off the record stuff, right? Yeah. And so, but, but off the record stuff that gets to us, I mean, has gotten to a lot of people way, way, way yeah. before us. And so, yeah. anyway, I mean, I think, I think this is such a, that's why it's such a perfect year because you can trust Dirk Cutter wholeheartedly you you don't ever have to even question it you basically just talk to Dirk about how awesome he's going to do this week right and then he's the defensive guy I mean you got to put together something is Stacy Collins doing um, special special teams Mm -hmm. that has to improve it's got to improve the returns that has to improve, and it's going to. I think there's no way it yeah. doesn't. I Hopefully, <laughs> I mean, you'd, you'd have to do some. Stacy Collins left. <laughs> well, actually, I mean, return the kicks of, this year. Outside probably, of kicking, right? we're, I mean, kicking and punting, we're doing great. Kicking and punting, we're two. We yeah. have two of the best. Yes, in the country. Oh, but returns, gosh. returns is bad. Punt blocks, kick blocks. Returns was just like don't screw up, don't screw up, don't screw up. <laughs> yeah. But but when Stacy Collins left last year, that was a really poor year, special yeah. teams wise. Not good. And then hopefully he can do that. And, you know, maybe even with with more freedom to coach, maybe they can do even better. Uh, I don't – sorry to be hyperbolic, and I know we're getting a little girthy here, but um. (laughs) – On on time? (laughs) We're feeling the girth on – You guys, I just – I'm feeling it right now. Like, this year has – like, we were hyped last year with Taylor and all that. Yeah. That was big-time hype we hadn't had in a while. I I feel like it's like – Ten times that these this year because we're believing mm. in Danielson. We got star players and good positions. We got Dirk Cutter. I think this is our best chance for vintage. To use your, what you guys were talking about last yeah. week, vintage Boise State. Like we're just knocking the socks off of people. You know what's interesting about this year? Let's do it. Well, we decided about the basketball team. That they're going to win. Yeah. Socks off. He'll look better. Yeah. His black socks. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's interesting is how much um, Bolt, how much they like Mad Dog. Yeah, oh, I and how much Dirk loves Mad Dog? I love Mad. He's a good kid. I want him. Not just the, like him. not just the kid. No, yeah, he's but like the player. Dude, he's a gamer. He's a he well, can throw when it. Bolt he can run t- it. When Bolt was talking about, he's like he throws the ball exactly where we need it. He yeah. sound, he sounded like he liked Mad Dog better than Taylor. Right. Yeah. Right. Which I I love Mad Dog. Which makes sense because for him, Mad Dog would pass on the ball. And Taylor wouldn't pass on the ball. <laughs> you know, it was just like McAllister down the right. side or a screen or whatever. Dude, McAllister got like 20 targets that <laughs> one game. <laughs> yeah. And to, Bolt, to Bolt's, you know, to his defense, he wasn't in until that Fresno game. Which was late. That was like last four I games. I didn't even it? know last that. Last four or five games. That was, that was wild. That's something I did not know. I thought, like, yeah, because his first catch was like this season. Huge yeah. in Fresno. Yeah. yeah. A huge was catch. Was it first <laughs> catch? Across, yeah. Of his career. Well, and, and we were like, all all through the season, we were like, get Bolt some playing time. And nobody even knew you, he you wasn't available. Were, I, People I were campaigning for it, wearing yeah. shirts. It was yeah. pretty yeah. impressive. And I knew all along <laughs> who, was who that? that was. <laughs> <laughs> but it was interesting to see how much um, how much Bolt liked Mad Dog over, yeah. you know, he hadn't obviously caught any passes from Malachi. I wonder if Taylor's name will get more in the mix. No, I don't think it will. <laughs> we're never going to see him play. Well, ne- we He may never play. That was it. Yeah. Because if Mad Dog stays and, and the Malachi leaves, off. yeah, he may not get any time. Well, who knows, though? It's crazy, right? Because both Malachi and Mad Dog could end up somewhere else in a year, right? That's the state of things, isn't it? So if Malachi, he's he's done one year. He he could have four years left, let's just say, because he did he played one or two games. He did. Okay, so he could play four more years, right? Not saying he will. But he can transfer too, or is he that could he transfer, to be a graduate transfer for that? No, he can transfer. At he can any transfer time. multiple times. <laughs> I, I, I just think assumed. So. Yeah, I just assume because everybody and does. Another pandemic may come. He may get like. Well, he doesn't COVID. get a COVID year, right? <laughs> I know, but another one might happen. <laughs> well, it's okay, so he could have four. <laughs> and Mad Dog, does Mad Dog have three or four more? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Mad Dog. Know. Mad Dog's a sophomore, so he's got three. He's got three, three. years. Yeah. So one of them won't stay. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see who they pick because everybody has so much good say. And he, Mad Dog was the glue I felt like on the field. The problem with problem with Mad Dog is he's injured. Yeah. I would love it if Malachi was like the best quarterback we've ever had here. But if he's not, dude, you know we did well with Mad Dog. We did so good. He played. He had what seventy percent of snaps or whatever. Like he wouldn't hand off a couple times. Anyway, well, and we don't know Malachi yet, so we can't count him out. But Mad Dog reflects the attitude of Danielson too. I think he's just like just there for the right reasons. Just wants to ball out and yeah. play for the team. I saw to this point we can 
log off if we need to, but I saw an article about an old Miss player that would that refused to sign the NIL agreement for NCAA. The football game. Yes. The video game. And he refused to sign the NIL agreement with old Miss because he's like, I I don't want to focus on NIL. I don't need it. I just want to be a good player. Crazy. And you know, They're I still think, out there. I like, think I it's I don't want your millions of dollars. Well, he's definitely not going to get millions of dollars. I mean, you get 600 bucks right, for NCAA. But, yeah. And, you know, how many – I don't know how many guys are getting millions. But I just think that there's a there's a chase. There's, a like, a land grab for NIL money. And I think it could be to some player's detriment. And I think some people are like, look, if I don't need it, why do I have to go for it? Like, why do I have to bow at the altar of NIL? You know, like, why do I have to do that when I could just be a good player, earn my money in the NFL, enjoy my college experience, and move on? Like, getting a couple thousand dollars – a year may not be worth what I'm sacrificing. I don't know. Yeah. I thought that was an interesting article and you know, you're going to see that, but it's never going to turn the tide. <laughs> yeah. Um, li- sorry. I know we're going to end it, yeah. but do you guys ever think about doing maybe like a live event or something for the podcast? Cause yes. you know, what would be a good candidate for that is the release of NCAA football, something like that. Some type of live stream yeah. playing that. That'd be kind of fun. We tried to do a live stream last week. <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get so there. we have we have the technology, but we don't have the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because my heart is tied to NCAA football and Brandon Miner. That's for sure. Mm. <laughs> we have some good we, stories we could share there. Can I tell one story about Nacho Tay? <laughs> At your house? At my house? Staying in the night too late? Yeah. Dave? So, <laughs> yeah. This is when. So this if, is after if high you've school. Stuck around this long in the podcast. It was worth it for this. This story. is the yeah, dregs this of is the is barrel. <laughs> this, is <laughs> this is the dregs of the drink. No, this that is you're the payoff. Consuming. Okay. Well, just. Cut it up and put it in a clip. <laughs> Give it to him early. Yeah, that's good. This is extra content. <laughs> but anyway, so this was two years after high school, and it was kind of in between apartments. And we were Taylor and I were moving into an apartment that started at the start of the year of the school year. Mm. And it, this was in the summer. And Taylor, so I was living at home at the time, and Taylor lived fairly close. And we were grown men, potentially. You were adults. Theoretically. Technically. Yeah, we were like 21. <laughs> And we were, I was at my dad's house, and I was at my parents' house, and we, we would play NCAA for really like hours and hours and hours. So you introduced it to me. I'd never experienced You'd never it played it? No. And I loved it so much. Oh, Madden, I played it. I thought we, we, played, maybe we played Madden. Anyway, so we were playing it a ton. And then we'd get to be like 1230 or one. And so I'm late. like, bro, I'm going to bed. Like, I'm just kind of tired. And then Taylor Beck, all right, I'll let myself out. And then he <laughs> would really play. I really assertive with it. I was like, <laughs> it's fine. Like, I was no, like, no, we're good. He's we're like, good. and then Taylor would stay for a couple more hours. I, right? I could not stop playing. But, I loved it so much. <laughs> but my, one thing about my dad is he's like psychotic in that <laughs> he would wake up at 2 a.m. and eat like cereal it was or horrifying. something. The, being in that basement while all that was going up there was <laughs> so horrifying. Go happen, on, go on. What would happen is we had this really long hallway from his so long. from his room, well, and my hallway. dad had the loudest <laughs> steps. So it would be like bang, 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 footsteps. Coughing. And what you do is you, you have to turn off the TV so he doesn't see any <laughs> blue light. Yeah. And then you you hear him slurping down Cheerios. He's, he's coughing too, and he's yeah. coughing. He's slurping down for a half hour, and Taylor's sweating. You know what I mean? <laughs> I would I would flip the TV off as soon as I heard the noise to go undetected and wait it out because I needed to It'd keep be playing. Be like a apparently. half hour or yeah. whatever, and then you'd hear like the bang, 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 bang all the way back to the room, and then Taylor would turn it back on and keep playing for an hour. And Taylor would be like, I would fall asleep on defense, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd wake up and it'd be first and forty because I'd have all these like <laughs> delay of games, delay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd play offense, fall asleep. But then one day Taylor, he didn't, he wasn't quick enough, and um, my dad came downstairs. I got, com- I got comfortable, yeah. and it was two thirty. Yeah, and it was two thirty. My dad's like, "Who's down there?" And Taylor's like, mm, "Me." <laughs> <laughs> It's Taylor Whitney, it's sir. me, sir. <laughs> and he's like, he got kicked out. He got curfewed at my own house. He's like, Taylor, you got to go. Dude, I went you on. You got to leave at 12. drive you home? Dude. You got to leave at 12 <laughs> is, what, he, is I, what my dad said. So he's like, and I was like, dad, why do you care? You're sleeping. Like, why the hell do you even care that somebody's down there playing? Like, why is it a big deal to you? Anyway. That was I, a, I even that escaped was out the back door once, <laughs> like, to go undetected. And I was like. I can do. I can do it. I you went back, back in? in. I went back in. <laughs> it was criminal. that bad. The draw was like. <laughs> was, <laughs> like <laughs> was it cold outside? I didn't I realize like, how addicted stairs, you like, were. I think he's gone. I think I can do it. And then I, I went back. Maybe in. Maybe my dad was right. Maybe yeah. you were too addicted. No, I think he was. <laughs> I think your dad yeah, was he's right. Gone. He's gone. He's gone. I'm going. The back thing in. is, when we when we moved finally moved into our apartment, we were like. All night, baby. <laughs> we we did. Like, Probably, hey. At that point, it wasn't worth it. It was like, man. No, we played, no we played we a lot. We played like yeah. a we season per day or something. Yeah, yeah, we would play a lot. Wow. 
And uh, that would was you, a good time. Would you do what Johnny Ballgame did and bet based no. off of the simulation? <laughs> did he say he would go through and, and manually add in the names yes. of the roster? Yes. That's crazy. Yes. The, the, tree, the, ki- the trick was he plugged in a keyboard. You could USB. do a USB. Oh, okay. Keyboard. That's not as bad. Yeah. That's still very That's a lot of clicking. Tedious. Yeah. yeah. Still no, and... And then he said he would simulate all the games he'd bet on college football based, <laughs> based on, off of oh, the simulation. Oh, he would bet on real sports from yes, the simulation. Yes, oh. like teams playing that night. Oh, I, think that, I think he has more of a problem if he's doing that than I did. Yeah, the, yeah. well, so. that was a good time. That's coming back. Mm-hmm. It's coming back. So Why don't you, know. you get us out of here, Brandon? All right, uh, time Boise to get State out of here. What's going on? Basketball <laughs> playing Colorado. Wednesday night. It's going to be a win. It's going to be a win. Please. We, we've Mad already Max is going to show up. Taylor's set it out into the universe. Put that positive energy 30 behind it. 30 points for Max Rice. And RJ Keen plays. Kobe Whoa. Young plays. Whoa. That, we're going no, deep. I'm just saying what. Because it's a blowout. If yeah, we're, we're up by 30. Bench, that'd be sweet. We're going to be dunking on them when we're up 30, and it's K- going to be a fight. Cade Rice gets <laughs> yeah. in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good day. Yeah. I would like that. I would like that. Uh, if you're watching us, like, subscribe, share this with your friends. Please follow us on Twitter. Appreciate you listening. Uh, we will catch you next time.